everybody. I'm Tamara Krinsky. I'm LZ Granderson. And we are here live at the world premiere of Marvel Studios' Avengers Infinity War. This is an incredible day. Absolutely. Look at this crowd. The people are so excited. The fans have been here since last night. Absolutely. And we want you guys to join in on the conversation. So follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Avengers and use the hashtag Infinity War. There are so many stars coming down this carpet, and this is a huge carpet here today. We're going to bring all the stars straight to you. You've got the two of us, yes. and we are also joined by our other two co-hosts. First off, we have Lorraine Sink, who is standing in front of the Infinity War exhibit. This is a very big carpet. Let's see what she's got going on. Hey, Tamara. Hey, LZ. I'm here down more towards the middle of Hollywood Boulevard. This is actually one of the biggest premieres. It, I, it is the biggest premiere that Marvel Studios has ever had. It's approximately two football fields long. It's huge. And I'm here right in the middle of it at the end of the press line, right before the Infinity War exhibit. And I'm going to be catching up not just with stars from the film, but you know the Marvel family is big, so I'll be seeing maybe some TV stars and creators here as well. Uh, how's it going there at the front, Tamara? And it's LZ? going great. I mean, we are surrounded by fans, full-on cosplay. We have seen almost every character character from the film dressed up at the moment. Yes, absolutely. I'm looking over and I can't believe we have future classmates dressed up as well. We got a Captain Marvel <laughs> waiting over there waiting for her debut soon. Well, if you want to get a look at 10 years of history of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, that's going to be our co-host Langston, who is inside the Infinity War exhibit and also Marvel Cinematic Universe 10th anniversary exhibit. So let's take a look at where he's at. Yeah, that's right. I am here at the Avengers Infinity War exhibit, hanging out with the Mad Titan himself, Thanos. And like you said, behind me is the Marvel Cinematic Universe 10th Anniversary exhibit. There are so many props, so many costumes. It's an incredible collection. I'm going to bring you so much more of it, but I don't want to give away too much, so let's head back to the carpet. And we are here kicking it off with Letitia Wright. Hello, how are you? We are so good. This is amazing. Thank you. Prada made me this amazing uh, custom-made uh, suit, so I'm really grateful, so it's really cool. Well, speaking of suits, uh, Sherry does some pretty good suit making herself. I think she could give Tony Stark a run for her money, right? I think so, I think so. Uh, I think he should, you know, hire her and, and let her do some developments, and we'll see how that goes. <laughs> so who's the smartest person in the universe, though? Is it you? Is it Banner? Is it Stark? I would say between the three of us, obviously I would be biased and pick Sherry, <laughs> but I think that she has a lot to learn from both Bruce and Tony. Although I have to say, there was a clip recently released where we see you and um, Banner yes. helping Vision. We don't know why yet, because yeah. we haven't gotten the surrounding information. Why yet? But uh, you kind of school him in what should be done. Oh uh, yeah, she's just trying to put two and two together and figure out why didn't you make it easier for yourself? Why did you make it so hard? You know, she's just trying to help a friend out. You know, oh. I can't let you leave the stage without asking you this question. Yes. What are those? These are Prada. <laughs> 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 we have two sets of very fancy silver shoes here. Um, I'm also really curious, you know, at the end of Black Panther, we decide to open, we, you guys decide to open Wakanda to the world a little bit. And how does yeah. Sherry feel about that? Um, I think she's in, you know, support of her brother, opening up the borders. But then as she's, and as you can see in this film, there's a lot more people than she expected to uh, <laughs> cross the borders. But you know, she's still open-minded to helping them, and we're going to see how that pans out, and you're going to get to see it um, on April 27th. But towards the end of Black Panther, you wonder why your brother was taking you to this abandoned building. <laughs> yes. Did you make it to Coachella last weekend? No, I did not. I did not get to join the Beehive. I am so gutted about it, but I was supporting and, and promoting Avengers, and that was that's worth it as well, so yeah. Next well, year. well, the fans definitely appreciate it. We have got to send you on your way down this incredibly long carpet. We are so happy you stopped to talk to the fans. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you, guys. Have a Thank great Thank you. Have a great tonight. time. Bye. And next up, we have Michael Shaw. Come on over here. Hello. Hey there. Nice to meet you. You are new to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Welcome. Yes, I am. Yeah. It's been a pleasure working with these great individuals. Yeah. What are you actually allowed to tell us? Uh, not much. As you've seen in the trailers, there's only been a little glimmer of the Black Order, and I think they're trying to keep it that way on, a, on, on a, for a reason, you know? Yeah. So are you, I mean, I know your name. Are you allowed to tell the fans who we're talking to live right now? Oh, yeah. I'm playing Corvus Glaive. And you did a lot of mocap on this, right? Yes, uh, mocap and uh, voice action as well, yeah. 
So what's it like working with the Russos in the voiceover booth? Are they energetic? Are you like a very, you know, do you like to stay still? Do you get physical? Well, they're kind of like a dynamic duo, you know? One is all about the beats and the moments, the other one's about the visual and uh, where the camera's moving. So they tag team the scene and they were really open about my input and where I wanted the character to go. So it was a real, like, genuine collaboration. And physically, what did you have to do to prep for the role? Oh, so the minute I got cast, it reminded me of a lot of the physical work we did back in uh, acting school. So I went back to my teacher, this guy Moni Yakim, and did a lot of mime work, a lot of animal work to prepare for the role. You also look like you're in really good shape. Are there any stunts that you're doing personally in the film? Oh, there are a few I got to do. Uh, when we were shooting out in Scotland, I begged and uh, pleaded, and uh, I got to do a couple fight scenes, which is great, yeah. What is it like to be a black pro antagonist in a film on the heels of Wakanda and all the black protagonists? Well, I don't like to see them as antagonists. They're just people with a different point of view. You know, I want something that it, uh, the Avengers don't want. But, you know, he's a good guy, sort of. <laughs> well, you could even say he's got his own team, right? The Black Order. You guys work as a unit. There's something very sort of noble about that, We're right? for what we call good, you know? I'm glad that's subjective. That's what makes these movies so good, right? Oh, yeah. It's a difference, difference in perspective. That's all it is, you know? Well, thank you so much for stopping by and talking to the fans. Have a wonderful time tonight. Congrats. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> All right, you guys can probably hear the fans, right? They're screaming on yeah. either side yeah, of us. I can barely hear you talk right now. The, the fans are so loud and incredible right now. I know. We want to remind you guys, this is live. Anything can happen. So we actually had a chance earlier to talk to some of the fans here. Langston had a chance to see what they're up to and what they're excited about. Let's take a look. All right, so many awesome fans here at the premiere of Marvel Studios Avengers Infinity War. I'm here actually with one of those amazing fans, this amazing Hella. Uh, how are you? I am so good. You have no idea. <laughs> how long did it take you to make this amazing headdress? A week. I, I was in crunch time. You were in crunch time, so it was only a week. That's awesome. So yeah, if you got a week, you can make an awesome <laughs> Hella helmet. Uh, next up, an amazing Valkyrie. Hello, Valkyrie. Hello. Yeah, uh, who are you most excited to see in uh, Marvel Studios Avengers Infinity War? Actually, I'm excited to see Captain America. Actually, you are? Yeah. <laughs> were you surprised that you were? <laughs> no, but I think what's most exciting is how many people are going to be in it. That's oh, yeah. It's going to be nuts. Now, I, last but not least, uh, look at this. The guy mentioned himself, Loki. Loki, how are you today? Excellent. How are you? Yeah, very good. Uh, now, I got to ask you, there's so many characters meeting in this movie. Who are you excited to see meet for the first time? The Hulk. And? Hmm. There's so many characters, I know. Tony Stark. And Tony Stark, and the, the re-meeting of the, the science bros. Well, it's amazing out here at the premiere of Marvel Studios Avengers Infinity War. Get down here, we're all having a good time. Amazing fans, the truth is, we are here for you. We gotta thank you for 10 years of support and inspiration. You're the reason we're here. Thank you for 10 years of... Your greatest cosplay. Standing in those long lines for Hall H. Reading the comics after you saw the movie. Twitter fights. And it's all been leading up to this. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks for being so incredible. We couldn't have done any of this without you. just amazing to see these actors all thanking the fans so genuinely. Yes, I took it personally because I grew up <laughs> with Marvel Studios and wanting to see these characters come alive. And so I'm probably the biggest fan of all right now. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe in height you are, but I think I could rival you. <laughs> That's very <probably> true. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. We've got a lot of super fans here because they're all dressed up and they look amazing. As a couple of the cosplayers were reminding us earlier, they have created all of their own costumes. So there is time and energy spent on this. Lorraine, yeah. what's happening down at your end of the carpet? 
Well, as you said, the fans are just bubbling. You can hear them off to the sides. We have little windows where people can see in, and they get very excited when they see anyone. And I also always love that when we see other talent from other shows, other places, you know, they're huge fans of the Marvel Cinematic Universe as well, so they're here celebrating with us also. But, you know, Marvel has different ways that they celebrate the release of films. In fact, there's actually Marvel Studios Avengers Infinity War special Marvel gaming content from Marvel Contest of Champions, uh, as well as a lot of other games. We're seeing all kinds of amazing characters, costumes, events, and and just, you know, it's such a fun way to celebrate your fandom. And you can actually download Marvel Contest of Champions on your phone or your mobile device at uh, the App Store or Google Play. And as you can see, who doesn't want to fight against Thanos? He's huge. He's titanic. He is the Mad Titan. So obviously, who wouldn't want to? You know what I mean? Uh, how's it going there with you, Tamara? Oh, Elsie and I are having a great time here. It is a super sunny day here in oh, Hollywood. Yeah. We're going to have a gorgeous sunset streaming down the carpet. Absolutely. Though I have to tell you, I don't want to fight Thanos. He looks mean. <laughs> <laughs> Give me someone smaller than that. <laughs> He's a little scary. He's a little scary. Yes. Um, well, we've got some small superheroes, you know. I mean, we've got Ant-Man in the universe. We have Ant-Man and the Wasp coming out later this summer. So. Absolutely. And Spider-Man isn't exactly the biggest of all the superheroes either. So. No, I'm still trying to figure out how you can be a superhero and be in high school at the same time time so well multitasking it you know it's the new generation That's absolutely what they do. right right the millennials That's... you know <laughs> oh, what are you gonna do <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot that we get to see in this film including trying to find and gather all of the infinity stones absolutely and if you've been paying attention you know one particular stone is wedged in the forehead of vision I'm personally very worried about his safety you know, I think we're supposed to be worried about his safety. That is good storytelling. <laughs> we want to build tension. We want to there build... is a lot of tension. We know one is hanging around the neck of Dr. Mm -hmm. Strange. Yeah, that's our green time stone in the eye of Agamotto. Yes. Mm -hmm. We've got um, the mind stone, of course, vision, as you mentioned. We mm -hmm. have um, the power stone, which supposedly is safe with Nova Corps on Xandar. Xandar, which is very lovely this time of year, I hear. Oh, are you going to plan a vacation there? Oh, well, you know, if the stone is still there, why not? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have the ether, which yes. is with the collector. Right, so which Beneath we saw in Dark World with Thor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's right. Um, and then, of course, uh, we're still, you know, where's the soul stone? Where is the soul stone? That is the big question. I have theories. Do you now? I do. All right, I well, do. before you give any spoilers, <laughs> we're going to go take a look and see how Langston is doing. Hey, How's the guys. exhibit? It's so great. Uh, speaking of great, uh, check out... I am standing in front of Tony Stark's race car from Marvel Studios, Iron Man 2, uh, that he raced in Monaco against the wishes of Pepper Potts. Uh, this is just one of the many amazing props that is here in this exhibit. This is the largest collection of props and costumes on a Marvel Studios carpet ever. They have brought in so many things from so many different movies from all 10 years and 18 movies of Marvel's amazing history. Now, uh, if you look down there, there's going to be a bunch of costumes and there's going to be a whole bunch of really cool props. Now, I don't want to give too much away again. I want to get to all of it. So I'm, uh, that's all from the carpet here for now. Now we're going to actually take a look at Avengers Infinity War. We're going to give you guys a little, little peek at the movie. The entire time I knew him, he only ever had one goal. To wipe out half the universe. If he gets all the Infinity Stones, he can do it with the snap of his fingers. Just like that. Tell me his name again. Thanos. We got one advantage. He's coming to us. We have what Thanos wants, so that's what we use. Let's talk about this plan of yours. I think it's good, except it sucks. So let me do the plan, and that way, it might be really good. Wow.
perfectly balanced. As all things should be. I hope they remember you. I'm Peter, by the way. Doctor Strange. Oh, I'm using your made-up names. Then I am Spider-Man. It is so exciting to be here celebrating 10 years of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yes, 10 years, 18 films. This makes number 19. I know, and all 18 films open number one at the box office. We're talking $13 billion in global box office. Well, how many times have you seen Black Panther? <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I'm not going to get into a contest with you. A lot, though. <laughs> So what are some of your favorite moments from the MCU? Uh, you know, there are definitely favorite scenes, but what stick out to me most are the quotes, the great lines. Mm -hmm. Hey, auntie, <laughs> from Black Panther was like iconic. Nice. Uh, I am Iron Man. Of course. Absolutely fantastic. And then Ragnarok. Hey, it's a guy I know from work. Who doesn't love that line, right? That whole scene is fantastic. I know. I think I've got a gift somewhere with that going on. Um, <laughs> what about I, yourself? Well, I mean, of course, there's the big action scene. I mean, there's that sort of barrel of monkey stunt when they come from Air Force One, and they actually used real paratroopers to do that. So it was a live practical stunt. I mean, that's amazing. Um, so practical stunts, you know, you've got moments, too, between the characters. Um, there's actually a moment in Avengers where, you, where I feel like you see the core of um, Black Widow and Captain America's friendship start, mm -hmm. where it's during the big battle of New York, and she is going to like catch a ride with the Chitauri to get up to the top of the tower, and um, Cap gives her an assist by putting up his shield, and he's like, are you really going to do this? And she's like, well, I mean, yeah. And she just, he gives her the assist on the thing, she pops up, she does it, and he just gives her this look of awe, which is amazing. It's such a small character moment, but I think there are things like that that just elevate these movies so much and make us care. Yes, absolutely. I mean, one of the things that's great about these 19 films mm -hmm. is the casting and yeah. the fact they understand nuance and mm -hmm. timing. So it isn't just about explosions and loud noises, but there's actually yeah. real raw human emotion that you can feel from these characters and you see the human side of them as mm -hmm. well as the superpowers. Absolutely. I mean, and a perfect fusion of all of that, I think, is the fight between Cap and Tony uh, at the end of the Civil War. <laughs> I'm, I still haven't recovered emotionally from it because I was team both and they made me choose and I haven't made that choice yet. You know what they say, you got to choose a side. <laughs> um, speaking of choosing sides and special moments, we would love to know what you guys are thinking. What have been your favorite moments over these last 10 years? You can uh, follow on Avengers at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and please use the hashtag Infinity War. We want to know what you guys are thinking about as we celebrate this momentous occasion. Yes, I'm especially curious if you want Chris to have long hair or short hair, <laughs> Prince Hemsworth. There's been a lot of hair changes throughout all of this. Yeah, absolutely. Scarlett Johansson. Hanson's had quite a few hairstyles over the years. I know, I know. Oh, we've got some people screaming, so that means more talent is arriving. We will bring them to you very soon. Um, but let's take a look at another piece of what's happening down in our exhibits. Langston, what do you got? Okay, I heard y'all talking about Wakanda a little bit earlier, so I brought the goods. This is T'Challa's throne from Marvel Studios' Black Panther. Um, you can see, the, what I love about this exhibit, uh, everything in this exhibit, is the, the details. You can see so many details from each and every one of these props and costumes, the, the Wakandan text, the inlay, the wooden stuff, and everyone's coming through here taking pictures. Everyone's so excited to see all these things up close and personal because they have such a tether to each and every one of these stories that these costumes and props represent. I mean, from seeing the Black Panther costume up close to being able to see Tony Stark's car and seeing people come through and the smiles on their faces when they, you can see the memories like pop up in their brain of when they first saw some of these things. Now, the length of this carpet cannot be underestimated. People have been walking in here all day. I have not seen such a large amount of people, maybe in my entire life, uh, enjoying themselves. <laughs> so um, one thing I also, oh, actually, uh, now that I think about it, I'm going to go check out some more stuff. So I'm going to send back to you, Tamara. Enjoy. Oh, man, this is one of those times I really wish I could be in two places at once because I want to go sit on that throne. I was just thinking the same thing. I said, I know there's a velvet rope there, but how do you not sit on Chajala's throne just once? 
Well, I mean, I think T'Challa might actually have something to say about that. So yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's pretty good at defending it, as we saw in Black Panther. <laughs> Lorraine, what do you have going on? Well, you know, we've been talking about how it's a big Marvel universe, and we have some of our friends from Marvel's Cloak and Dagger, Jamie Zaveos and Andrea Roth, here to talk a little bit about the show. Well, first of all, we got to talk about the film. What are you guys most excited to see tonight? Where can you start? Like, it's, it's, it's epic. I'm with her. I'm kind of confused. <laughs> like, who do I want to see first? I'm a yeah. huge Tony Stark fan, but... Yeah, that's, that's probably it. That's my answer. All right. Well, I can't wait to see what Tony's up to also. But let's talk a little bit about Marvel's Cloak and Dagger. I'm so excited. South by Southwest, huge buzz about the show. Congratulations. Uh, what has it been like for you guys to finally get to share a little bit of it with the fans? Uh, we need to say that we get to share a very little bit about it with the fans, um, right? I feel yeah. like I, I, we're under lock and for, key. For me, almost nothing. Yes. My right. parents don't even know what this is about. Oh, well, I'm going to tell them later. Now they will. Now All they right. will. But you play Father Delgado, uh, and you're going to be important to a certain member of Cloak & Dagger's life. Can yes. you talk a little about it? Yeah, I think it's someone that I, I can talk about it. I, I think, can I talk about it? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Why not? Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think it's uh, I play more of a, of a of a mentor than anything. He's a father. He's a priest, but he's a mentor. He's someone that he's a fatherly father. Fatherly father that, that, but he's also a real person, and he's going through his own battles and stuff like that. So, he's uh, I, I think the the best mentors are someone that's actually been through the thing that they're mentoring. So, I love that. And now, is Melissa Bowen going to be a motherly mother? Is the real question to Tandy. That remains to be seen. Um, I, I, she loves her with all of her heart, but unfortunately circumstances in life have made uh, things complex, uh, to say the least, and uh, so the rest uh, remains to be seen. Well, we'll just have to wait to watch it. It's coming out in June, but tomorrow, what's happening over there at the front of the carpet? Uh, speaking of interconnected universes. Hi. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm excited. I mean, I feel like you are the center of this universe. You connect oh, it all through all the strands. That's a way of looking at it. You know, there's many, many beautiful points in this universe now, and I'm just pleased to be one of them. I feel like all the comic books in my childhood collection melted into each other, and that's this movie. I'm so excited. And to have Wakandans now, oh my god, I'm just I'm kind of geeking out. Yeah, we all geek out, actually, yeah. so we're all on the same page. And we are surrounded by this amazing group of fans geeking out. What's it like being surrounded by all of these different characters right now here in this moment? I mean, it's really moving. They've still got Agent Phil there. Quite, quite a lot of <laughs> love there still. I like it, you know? Uh, Wait a minute, Agent if, Phil or Director Phil? Um, at this moment, I believe I'm, I'm an agent. They keep demoting me here and there. Um, it's an amazing journey. I'm introducing, uh, I'm introducing Iron Man at the Nerdist beginning of the marathon leading up to this, and it was 10 years ago. So to see what Marvel has done and what these incredible actors and filmmakers, the Russo brothers and everybody else, John Favreau, Joss, the way they've told this huge story and not dropped a single chapter, it's just, the payoff is just built and built. I'm really thrilled. What is it like being an iconic character despite not actually technically being a superhero? I mean, I, I, it's what I love about it. I think it's kind of why Coulson landed the way he did is, it is a world of super, powered and super skilled people and he was very much there as your kind of average guy enjoying it and geeking out a little bit and maybe getting a little too carried away when Cap walks in the room. We all get a little too carried away when Cap walks in the room. It's common. I'm not alone. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for taking time. It's amazing to have had you on this journey with us for 10 years. Have a great time tonight. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thanks. All right, we are now getting this talent streaming down the carpet. Yes, we are. We are hello. hello, how are you? Hello. Come on over. <laughs> how is this moment? I mean, this is crazy. Yeah, this is fun. I'm so excited that we get to finally see the movie. Because you haven't, you seen, haven't it seen it yet. You haven't seen it? No, no one has, I think. I'm not sure. I definitely have not. No, they actually, the Russo brothers this morning put something out about the fact that tonight is the very first time anyone is seeing the full thing. Yeah, and it's cool that we all get to sit in a theater and watch it together and celebrate this kind of end of the last 10 years. Your character has such a fascinating maturity route and growth to, the, to what happened to her. Can you talk about what it's like to play in such a complex character within this universe? 
Yeah, I mean, I feel so lucky that they, the writers and Kevin Feige have continued to give me interesting character and storylines. And this film, I get to do my favorite um, character arc yet. So I'm really excited to share it with everyone. We, we won't ask you for specifics because we don't want any spoilers. But my question, you know, we're talking about seeing the whole movie. You guys don't get the whole script. So for you as an actress, how do you sort of plot out like where you are on any given day in the script? What's that challenge like? You just you just show up and, and you're ready to receive whatever. <laughs> you don't get too attached to anything, which is really a nice exercise. <laughs> you know, we spend a lot of time talking about how fit the men are for their stunts, but obviously the women are just as strong. What is some of your routine that you do in order to stay so fit? Um, I mean, boring stuff, like regular gym stuff. <laughs> But I got to I got to work with um, the stunt team a lot more this year, and that was really special. And they incorporated Scarlet Witch's movement. I flew a lot more. I was on wires a lot. So that was all really cool. Now, how did you like the wire work? We've heard from some of the others that going upside down maybe not as much fun. Never did it. I always had a pick to keep me upright. <laughs> but um, but I love it. I'm addicted to it. I even if it was on my back, I wanted to be on the wire. Yeah. And you've been going on this world tour with your Marvel family. What's it been like traveling the world together promoting this? I wish I could have done more of it, honestly. Um, You're very busy working. Yeah. <laughs> I'm working. But I was able to go to London, and that was incredible. And then doing uh, the junket this weekend was so much fun, because it's almost impossible to wrangle us, because all we want to do is catch up with each other. It's truly a really happy family to be a part of. And it wow. feels like a family, too, when we watch you perform on stage and on film. Yeah, hopefully. Oh, my God, we have police on the roof. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're very <laughs> special. We're, you know, we don't want anything to happen to Scarlet Witch. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Although I have a feeling Scarlet Witch can take out any challenge. <laughs> we, unfortunately, have to send you down the carpet because there are a lot of people who want to talk to you. But thank you for stopping and talking live to the Marvel fans. Thank you. Hey, Thanks. Thank you. You thank look you. amazing. Thank you. Have a great time tonight. Lorraine, who are you talking to? Well, I actually have somebody here with me on my podium. You might remember him as Yondu, Michael Rooker. Hello, sir. Hi, hi, guys. How are we all? I'm very well. So we're celebrating 10 years of the Marvel Universe. And I have to say, I think you are the best daddy. Not father, but daddy in the Marvel Universe. Uh, what is it like seeing your little Star-Lord fly off to a new team? Uh, well, you know what? First off, I think you're a pretty good mama. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Uh, so what is it like seeing uh, Peter Quill, you know, uh, Chris Pratt off he's with a new team? Kid. He's a good kid, huh? And he's grown up, and now he's a big superhero guy, and he's uh, about to uh, take care of Thanos. Let's hope. We hope. Uh, uh, oh, I'm sure he'll, he'll, do his, he'll do his deed. So what has been your favorite part of being part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, do you think? I know it's a big question, but... No, it's an easy question. Uh, meeting all the people. Yeah, yeah, uh, Kevin, everybody, uh, uh, you know, the whole, the whole crew, the whole team, uh, along with all the Disney people and, and uh, of course, all the actors and everyone that you become really good friends with, so it's you really know, nice. I have to say, you're also so wonderful with the fans. You're always at Comic-Con, and you love the cosplayers. What is your favorite Yondu cosplay? Because there have been so many great ones, and I feel like you've met so many. I, I like the little kids that are cosplaying as Yondu. And, they, see, they've already under, they already understand but there are a lot of little kids that come up to see Yandu in there. Unfortunately, I think they're a little disappointed that I'm not blue. Oh, yeah. And, I, and I'm constantly telling them that this is my, this is my makeup for, for a, a human. Yeah. You know, so. How long does it take you to get into human makeup? Oh, about two hours. Oh, perfect, perfect. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. Tamara, how are you doing down there with LZ? Oh, uh, we're doing well, because we got Tom Holland making his way down the carpet. Absolutely, Spider-Man himself. Mm -hmm. You know, he is so funny yeah. in this film. That's the one thing that really shocked me with his comedic timing. <laughs> well, you know, you're going through high school, you got to have a sense of humor, otherwise you're just going to die out That's there. Uh, speaking of... <gasps> Hello! Let's see. What's up, bro? Good to see you, man. How you doing? Hey, guys. This is crazy. You have people screaming at you from both sides, loving on you. How's that going? It's crazy. It's always these things are always crazy. You know, it's so difficult to let this sink in. So you've been on a world tour with some of your Avengers brethren, you and the other Tom H and Benedict. We're doing some fun in London. <laughs> yeah, we did actually. Tom uh, Hiddleston and I 
were hanging out today playing uh, this game called Odds On, which is basically like a dare game. And we had a lot of fun hanging out by the pool, and uh, it was a lot of fun. So wait, what did you dare him to do? What's he good at? I dared Tom to uh, read a speech of Shakespeare for the whole, <laughs> for the whole pool. <laughs> How'd he do? It, it's a difficult game to explain, but you, you'd have to look up the game Odds On and you'll find out. When you follow you guys on Twitter and on Instagram, you're roasting each other nonstop. Was it instant in terms of your, or your friendship, or is this something that's grown through filming? You know, it's, it's a mixture of both. It's a mixture of hanging out with each other off set, and then it's a mixture of hanging out with each other in your awesome costumes on set and in front of cameras. So it's a bond that's unlike anything I've had with anyone before, so it's, uh, it's fantastic. And I'm, you know, I mean, to be 21 and to be here and to be Spider-Man is just crazy. Quick question too, technical question. I heard that you actually gave the Russos a tip about doing wire work upside down. Oh yeah. Yeah, in Spider-Man uh, Homecoming, if I was ever upside down doing dialogue, they would just stick my hair up and flip the camera upside down because as soon as you dangle upside down, you have veins popping out your head and it doesn't look very flattering. So the Russos, I had to be like, guys, here's a little tip about filming upside down people. Um, but uh, we didn't actually do it, but it, <laughs> hey. <laughs> I love you guys, you're amazing. Uh, this is amazing. We could talk to you forever, but clearly you have people who want to see everyone. I have to make sure I say hello to everyone, so thank you so much. See you hey, later, guys. Bye-bye. Congratulations. And that is why he is such an amazing actor and star, because he knows what the fans want, and he is out there giving it to them. So it's so great to see. Seems like the Brits are taking over. When you, when you add it up, like, my favorite characters now tend to be the British actors. Don't tell anyone. Oh, I don't know. You just said it live, I so I uh, it's out there. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a great group of Brits in this collection of superheroes, though, and it's really fun to see them all together. So. Absolutely. Which one is your favorite? I mean, I don't play favorites, but... Uh, there's you know, Chris, look. Chris, and Chris. There's Tom and Tom. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm going to avoid this question and see how Lorraine is doing. What do you have going on? Well, I have to say, Thanos better watch out because I have a spirit of vengeance next to me. Gabriel Luna, welcome to the premiere. I'm very well. It's so great to see you. you I have to say, you have a comic with you, and that just makes me love you. Uh, what made you say, okay, I got to bring my Infinity Gauntlet comic? Oh, I don't know. I just have a prop on the carpet, I think. Sometimes you don't know what to do with your hands. So, so you just keep comics. That's how I feel about my normal life. I just want to have comics with me to make me feel safe. Now, everyone loves Ghost Rider. Can, can you tease anything for us or no, we can't? We can't. There's nothing. No, no, I can't. Not, but, I, but you watch the show. I won't go show. as far as saying that, but there's definitely nothing I can tease. I do watch the show. I love Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, well, I love you on the show. I love Robbie Reyes. I know you're a big fan of the Robbie Reyes comic, actually. I, I see you reading it online. Uh, yeah, well, I've read it a few times. I have, uh, I just went into, I was just telling you, I just went into the Golden Apple here in Los Angeles and, uh, and signed some copies for Ryan, the owner there. Uh, but, and that's where I got this. He gave me this. It's a dollar reprint of the Infinity Gauntlet. I love that. I love those True Believer comics. Well, see, Jim Starlin might be on the carpet tonight, who was the original writer with Ron Lim and George Perez might be here. So you got to get out your marker and you can fanboy on them a little bit. I, I, I just may. Thank you. I'll blame it on you when they... You have my permission. I have no power. <laughs> oh, speaking of power, you're kind of Power Stone themed tonight. Yeah, yeah this is actually uh, intentional. Yeah. Um, is there an Infinity Stone that you'd like to have? Uh, power Stone or the Time Gem. I mean, you could get a lot done. Uh, but we have more to do over at the other side of the carpet. LZ, tomorrow, what's going on over there? Power Stone, the huh? Power Stone. Well, of course. You know, if, <laughs> if you're going to go for it, go for all of it, right? Exactly. Well, the Power Stone can, uh, can magnify the powers of the other stones. So. Well, I also like the Time Stone. Yeah. Because you can go back and instead of using like your DVR, you can just go back in time and watch it live all over again. Well, you know, you did ask about some of my favorite characters before, and I do think that the way that Doctor Strange outsmarted Dormammu, I mean, that was super cool. That was definitely very cool. Very you know what cool. else is cool? What? This purple carpet that we're standing on. Yeah. We said red carpet, but we're purple for Thanos, right? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Our big, uh, we, we like to call him an antagonist. There, there are no villains here in the Marvel Universe, Marvel Cinematic Universe, right? No, but rumor has it he's a real bad dad. <laughs> That's what I keep hearing in the script, that he's a bad father. You are not allowed to talk about rumors. Lorraine, <laughs> save us. No spoilers. No spoilers, zero spoilers, but I am here with Aubrey Joseph, another superhero. Welcome to Marvel Cinematic Universe, but this isn't your first premiere. Your first was Black Panther, because I saw you there. Right, right. Um, what are you excited about for tonight's premiere? I'm just excited to see the fight scenes, of course. I just feel like it's going to be 
huge, amazing, crazy. So I can't wait. I'm waiting. You know what else was huge and amazing and crazy was the reaction at South by Southwest. I saw that you and Olivia were there. Speaking of Olivia. Ash, hey. <laughs> there they are, my cloak and dagger. Uh, I was just saying, at South by Southwest, you guys took over Marvel Twitter. Uh, you were all over the Instagram. And the reaction was really great. What was it like for you guys getting to be a part of that? Really special, really important. I mean, you know, we were in New Orleans for almost five months shooting and sort of creating this story and bringing it to life. And I think sort of getting that immediate feedback and being in a room with people who haven't seen it and who haven't been a part of the story yet. And I don't know, I think, I'm speaking for both of us here, mm -hmm. but I think it was yeah. a really special. You guys are sort of, you know, matched together, like a cloak and dagger, but there's so much happening on the carpet. What's happening down the way? We are sitting here with Don Cheadle, hey. War Machine, formerly Iron Patriot. Hello. Thank you. Hello. How are you? I'm good. So, um, how is the walking going for Rhodey these days? How's he doing? Uh, you know, Rhodey is on the mend. Obviously, he went through something uh, pretty traumatic in the last one. Uh, but, you know, Tony, uh, ever, ever genius as he is, has uh, created a way for, for his best friend to get around, and, and things are looking up. Your comedic timing together on film is amazing. How much time do you two spend off camera? Uh, as little as possible. No, that's not true. <laughs> uh, you know, Robert's the homie. We've been doing this now for 10 years. So uh, we have a great relationship. It's uh, always kind of old home week whenever we uh, get to come back together. And there's, it's amazing that there's so many people in this movie. And the scheduling is an insanity. I don't know how they did it. Well, he's not the only one that you have amazing timing with. They released a clip, I think, either just today or yesterday, where we get to see you guys arrive in Wakanda, and there's this great moment where um, Banner asks you if you should bow before the king, and you're like, uh, yeah. Hey, the king. And then, bow. <laughs> right, which, of course, you shouldn't do. Was that an improvised moment on set? Was that scripted? That was kind of both. You know, we were just messing around, and uh, uh, Joe, uh, our director, said, yeah, you should tell him he should do it. And we just kind of messed around. Oh, Speaking of messing around, here's Loki. You? Come on in, buddy. <laughs> how are you? Hi. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Great. No, no. Don, stay. What? Stay. It's good to see you. Yeah. I'm just going to no, no, slide no, no. into stay, the back stay, here. Stay, you know, okay. Whatever. We're all together. Here we go. There we go. All right. You guys have been doing this for like five years now. You should know what to do, yeah? Yeah. 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 Actually, Tom and I just hung out a little bit yesterday on, it's a, really nice. on a tour bus. Yeah. It's kind of nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not often you get to go riding in a bus in LA with Don Cheadle. It's not often you get to go riding in a bus in LA sometimes. It was it, really it, pleasurable. It was, it was really pleasurable. It was a nice. warm breeze. A little sunny. A little hot for me. We had to sunscreen up. We, yeah, we did. We did lather that on, but yes. we survived it, and it was fun after all. Now, I heard you were doing Dares at the Pool with Tom Hiddleston yesterday. Is that true as well? What? Dares at the Pool with Tom Hiddleston? Is that or with what Tom Holland? You're Tom Holland. Hiddleston. Yes. Tom Holland. Yes, yes, there were, yeah. He's a, he should play the god of mischief. He's a very mischievous <laughs> Tom H. Yeah. When you look at the script from film to film, do you wonder if you're being the good guy, the antagonist, Thor's friend, Thor's enemy? Honestly, that's been the, the great privilege of playing this character is I signed up in 2009 to play the antagonist, uh, very complex character. And then it was very obvious in Avengers I was the villain. But after that, it's sort of, who is he? Because he's got so much vulnerability in him, um, and, uh, but also a lot of charm and, and mischief. So you never quite know which way he's going to go. And that's been- And tons of sex appeal, right? <laughs> I couldn't possibly comment. <laughs> I couldn't possibly comment. Rhodey's got the sex appeal, I thought. I will. He's sexy as hell, guys. We know this. It's Loki. Come on. <laughs> what was the most fun? Uh, it's getting a lot hot here. What was the most fun for you guys sort of seeing an, an unusual pairing that you hadn't seen in a previous film? Like, what was most fun for you to watch? Well, there's so, there's so many so of them. So many, yeah. And, and we haven't seen the film yet, so yeah. we don't know. I, we hope they all come off. We don't know. I think that's what's so exciting, though, is that is that uh, Marvel and every director and every writer and every actor has, have created these characters with such precision and each character has their own integrity. And because of that care and attention, when characters get together, you know the dance is gonna be interesting. Yeah. You know, some people who take themselves quite seriously, some people who don't. And, uh, <laughs> well said, <laughs> yeah. Well, we unfortunately have to send you guys down this carpet because there's so many people who want to talk to you and celebrate with you guys tonight. Thank you for stopping and talking with the fans. Yeah, great to see you. Yeah. We're missing the Houston game. Yeah. It was tight when I left. That's what I hear. I gotta let you know what's happening. Please do. Yeah. Text me. <laughs>
Lovely to see you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have uh, two gentlemen making their way over who know all of the answers to everything about this movie. Good, because I have a lot of questions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so right off on the side, I don't know if there's a shot of them, um, we have a little team we like to call the Russo Brothers. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty talented group of guys, uh, you, you would say. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they know a few things about the Marvel <laughs> they Cinematic Universe. Hello. Doing. Hi, Joe. How are you? How are you? Good, very good. Yeah. It's intense. What are you feeling? What is going through your mind right now? Uh, I, you know, it's... Yes. Oh, my gosh. This is uh, Jeff Ford, uh, editor extraordinaire, who edited the... Jeff, come on up here. Hey, how are you? Yes. Let's uh, get you guys all in here. Uh, oh, my God. So it's them. amazing. I mean, I think, you know, we've been working for uh, several years on this. I think we're all very happy to finally share it with audiences tonight. It's been so secretive that, uh, you know, it's the first time we can actually show the whole thing. I couldn't even get a script. I didn't have one. I was editing the movie. It was amazing. So that's actually what... He hasn't even seen the movie yet. <laughs> but wait, wait, but you edited the film. No, I'm kidding. I'm okay, okay, okay. Nobody's seen it more than he has. Yeah, okay, really yeah, all right, all right. But no, wait, I mean, we worked very hard on it, and to be able to present it tonight for the very first time is amazing, and the majority of the world is going to be able to see the movie in the next few days, so... So it's pretty amazing. So it's in your head that all these characters from the universe were going to get together, but what was it like to actually see them physically in the same space? Oh, it's incredible. Yeah. We're comic book fans. Themselves. We yeah. grew up uh, uh, loving all of these characters. Uh, you know, from Winter Soldier to Civil War to this, every time we have a moment where we get a lot of these characters together, it's like a dream come true for us. Now you get them together though, and they get really, really rowdy because they love each other. There's so much going on. How do you get them to pay attention and like go? Uh, well, we just, uh, yeah, we say the camera's rolling and uh, now's your chance. Say your line or forever hold your peace. But these guys are great at making everybody feel included and creatively contributing at all times. So they, they just set that cast on fire. Those guys, every every cast member was really giving it their best because they these guys know how to make people inspired. They really do. How does the directing work between the two of you to have two voices trying to get through a particular scene? Do you talk ahead of time and that's what you agree upon? Is it more organic? in the moment? Well, it's a little bit of both. We've been doing it so long, you know, we sort of figured out filmmaking together. We've, we've sort of traveled our whole road as filmmakers together. So we have a very intuitive process. Uh, and, uh, you know, we know how to confuse people when we want to confuse people. <laughs> and we know how to make things simple when we want to make things simple. So. They know when you are sleeping. They know when you want to be confused. <laughs> well, one last question, quickly. Um, uh, Winter Soldier, Civil War, a little bit more serious, more thriller in tone. Now you're dealing with characters that have existed uh, in comedic worlds, like Thor Ragnarok, um, pulling in the Guardians. That goes back to some of your comedic roots, directing shows like Community and Arrested right. Development. What was it like getting to play in that sandbox a little more? Uh, it's great. I mean, it's, it's a very unique tone in this film because you have the Guardians, you have Thor coming out of Ragnarok, you have some absurdist characters. Uh, most of the characters of the Marvel Universe deal with crisis through humor. Uh, however, you also have Thanos who is a very intense character. Not a lot of comedy with them. So it's a very complex tone. It can get very intense at times. And we keep telling the audience to be prepared. All right. Well, you guys heard it live here from the ones who know best. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thanks Thank for talking you. to the fans. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks very much. Okay. Have a great night. You guys heard it from them. There is a lot of layers going on in this movie. So Thanos is not cracking jokes? Is that what I heard? Or are, they, or are they misleading us? See, that's the thing. They're so oh, good at secret so keeping. They're so tricky. I know. Uh, speaking of tricky, look who's behind you. What? What? Come on over. Oh. Hello, hello. Nice to see you. Do I get to hold it? Or? No, I get to hold it. But you guys get to both come over here. Come a little closer. Nice. I, need that. I need a step stool like you. I need a step stool like you, so uh, How are you doing, brother? I don't look so short. You look pretty tall to me, you're good. Oh. But, okay, so that brings up the question. There's that great clip that was released where you meet Thor for the first time and your, your voice drops a little bit. What's going on there? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. I think it was his voice that uh, dropped because he was trying to impress me, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's just how so it is. much man. Really I get really intimidated all the time. We all do. What, what, what voice? What, what deepness? I don't know. He whisper. <laughs> he does, you know he's incapable of whispering. Is that true? That's true. Yeah. I never... Try it right now. Try it. Hello? Yeah, right? I, that's my whisper. That was whisperish. This is my projection voice, but this is my whisper. 
I never cheated on tests. I'd be like, what's the answer to number five? <laughs> Wouldn't work. Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh, Come on goodness. over. Oh man. Oh me. Oh. oh. No spoilers, no spoilers. <laughs> look at it, look at it. I'm playing the tall guy. <laughs> You can come step up on my box if you want. There's there's a apple box. There we go. There you go. How are you going? Sorry, sorry. We got your box. Okay, I almost just fell. So, welcome to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You're welcome. So, did you guys give him any tips about how to survive all of this? How to survive? I think they're trying to survive me. I think that's the point. So, I think they keep everything to themselves and they utilized every uh, everything that they could. You know, everything that I've read about Thanos is that he's complicated. He's a, he's a complicated father, he's a complicated dictator. Uh -huh. What was it about the role that really attracted you? Well, I mean, look, the, the, the idea of 22 Avengers against this guy was kind of fun, just the idea of that. And then they sent me a Bible that I looked through and there's so much history and then you get into the fandom and everything. These guys are used to it, I'm not used to it. So it, it's, you start to really kind of understand that this is something that people grew up with from six years old on. And it's great. It's great to be a part of that history. And they're very supportive. It's not like they just throw you in. They give you anything and everything that you need to make the job work. So you, you come into like a family of sorts, and everyone holds your hand and gives you as much as you, you could ever want. I saw his movie about a week ago, and I've never seen such people. Like, they went insane. They went insane, me included. Well, it's a fan. <laughs> and that's the best part about this. We are all fans. We are surrounded by fans. So we've got to send you guys on your way. Congratulations and yes. enjoy tonight. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Bless you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Who's, who's watching this? Oh, all of the Marvel fans. And this is live in the theater as well. Oh, it's live in the theater. Hey, guys. We'll see you inside. And thanks, everyone, for coming out. Woo woo. Great. Woo woo. You haven't seen it yet, right? No, I haven't. I haven't seen it yet. I'm really thrilled. I'm really excited. Um, I know I know for a fact it's very, very good because James Gunn told me so, and he is capable of lying about these things. Chris, like is there a... If he didn't like it, he would tell me. Is there a mixtape we can look forward to? There is some new Guardians of the Galaxy music you will hear tonight. Yes. Uh, we bring in, we're bringing everything Guardians. It's, it's coming with us. The flash, the color, the music, the attitude. It's all, it's all being brought to this movie, courtesy of some amazing Guardians of the Galaxy and one beautiful wasp, Evangeline Lilly. Come on over here. He's the king of speeches. Know, he's right, good, right? Yeah, he's the king of speeches. He does speeches like no other Avenger. Amazing. Um, you are fully decked out to celebrate the Wasp. It is so nice to have you here. Marvel Cinematic Universe, 10 years going strong, and you are right in the center of it now. How does that feel? It feels incredible. I, I, I just, we finished, wrap, we wrapped on the Avengers in December of this past year. And there was like 40 movie star rock stars all on set together in costumes, doing this ridiculous thing, like playing house together. And I, and I was like, I get paid for this. This is, this is my job. And it felt like I was a part of something that was making movie history. And that's, I mean, that's amazing. Look at, look at me. I know, look I at know, this. this is amazing. This, Incredible. You, you get to play an, yet another powerful woman in this universe. What is it like to see woman after woman in battle, in the science room, leading major companies if you're looking at Iron Man. Yeah, I, I think that this is a moment and that um, to ignore the fact that this shift is important on a societal level, this shift is important to little girls, to women, to women of all ages, um, would be to deny something that I feel in my bones. I, I, I've tried to play strong women my entire career and I feel like this industry is catching up and they're figuring out that you know strong women are an important part of, of stories but not just strong women but vulnerable women weak women interesting women funny women that that women's stories need to be told complex women women who show a lot of different sides and that was one of the wonderful things we got to see you do in ant-man and we're so excited to see ant-man and the wasp this summer thank you absolutely thank you Good have a you. wonderful time tonight and the talent keeps coming We've got some love happening here with our cast members. This is why the films are so special, moments like this. Mm -hmm. You get to see them be family with one another. Exactly, it's very clear that the bonds exist both on screen and off, which is good because a lot of these people have been working together for a very long time. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good, how are good you? Good to see you. Good to see you too. Hi, Hi. Can we shake? Yes. I need one of those. Hi, oh, you can come on. Stand up with, yeah. 
I like this a lot. Yeah, that's that's finally, like that. finally. That's, wow. no, this is what that's my what eyes look like. like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, I don't know what it's like to be taller than people. So. Come in, in here. Come in, guys. Come in. Uh, and Karen. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. It's about, it's about stronger together, you know. United we stand, divided we fall. So we're all together. We can do it. So you played a lot with the group, and you both have played a lot with the group. But for Doctor Strange, this is really the first time mixing it up with everybody. Yeah, it is for me. This is you're no newbie to this, but I'm I'm loving it. It's great fun. Yeah. Yeah. So what was it like bringing in a little bit of your realm into this and kind of playing with each other? Are you are you at all a little jealous of the the Stark Strange bond? What's happening? Um, I'm a little jealous. I it, I was made aware that um, the science bros are dead and that um, yeah, that was very the real the I real romance is here. Thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> well, this this is a bromance. Here, as let's well, move so everybody in. It's all there. It's all okay. You come over here. Yeah. You, you come on in. Come, in. come yeah. over here. Just We're a family here. Yeah. There is room for everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. come on over here. So, so I have a here. question that I'm dying to ask. I have a question that I'm dying to ask. Who is Black Widow really in love with? Is it you or is it Captain America? <laughs> Got it. I mean, Got it. it's obvious, <laughs> you know. Isn't Thank it? you. Thank That's you. That's a great non-answer. <laughs> it is a great non-answer. When are you running for office? <laughs> I just pointed at the person here, whereas you said it's just got to be. It's me, right? It's yeah, it is you. Yeah. Uh, see, that we were having this argument before, and I think she and Hulk all the way. What, what did Captain America say? He didn't say anything yet, but it was something about the way he threw her up to the alien spacecraft on his shield. They had a moment. It seemed like it was a little bit more than what it was. She's just playing him. <laughs> so for you guys, what's it been like bringing a little bit of the Guardians world into the rest of the MCU? Um, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of feels like uh, we're a family on Guardians of the Galaxy, and then uh, we were thrown into the Avengers and met all of our extended family and cousins. Um, and it was great fun. It was great fun to inject the, the Guardian's identity into the overall um, Avengers. Yeah, it, it was great. And, it, and they were, they were vel very welcoming to us yeah. as well. So it was nice to, uh, to see the ex extended family. And of course, a lot of you guys have been working together for a long time. You've developed a certain chemistry. You guys have developed a certain chemistry with the Avengers. How did that change when it all kind of came together? Did it get more zany? Did it get more serious? What happened? <laughs> I, it can only get more zany, right? I mean, I don't, you know, there's some, there's some real jeopardy here as well. There's some serious stuff being threatened by Mr. Thanos, that purple guy. But it's, uh, it's a lot of fun when you crack these heads together and have all these different alchemies kicking off. And that's the fun. And that's why this guy you're about to oh be over there with the hat. Oh, my God, look coming. Bring, it, bring, a, bring, it, bring some diapers and some Kleenex. That's all I got to say. <laughs> I don't even know how to interpret oh, that. Yes, All right, go. we gotta send you guys. We gotta send you guys away. Thank, Thank you guys. for stopping and come on. You know when Kevin Feige tells you to wrap things up, you listen. Absolutely. Ah, uh, Kevin, Chris. Welcome, sir. It is great to see you. See you, sir. Uh, hey, how are you? Hey, good to see you too. So how are you guys feeling? I mean, this is insane. This is incredible. Um, I'm very excited to see the movie. As you may have heard, none of us have read the entire script. We just got our pages, so this is. Uh, I'm excited to see if I'm still in the movie. <laughs> is he? Did he make it in? Yes. Chris is in the movie. I can spoil that exclusively on the live stream. Chris Hemsworth is in Avengers: Infinity War. Breaking news, yes. ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Breaking news. <laughs> what was it like working with the eye patch? I know it threw off your peripheral vision, but was it difficult on set? It was uh, CG, yeah, it was a CG eye patch. There was just three little dots, which I didn't even notice. But yeah, I'll tell you what the, the challenge occasionally was, we'd shoot from certain angles, ah. forget that I, they were later gonna put the eye patch on, and you'd, all you would be seeing was the eye patch. So we had to reshoot a couple of things based on that, but it, look, apart from that, it was fine. That's amazing. We have, a, we have many years of eye patch experience in the MCU <laughs> and learned that putting it on later was best for the uh, for the for the performance. I spoke with Samuel Jackson in length about it and his preparation and tips and techniques on wearing an eye patch and and of course Anthony Hopkins, my father, Odin, and I uh, felt like I'd done my research and it worked out. <laughs> These actors do not leave anything behind; they plumb all depths of character. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, they also you didn't get a full script, and that takes a lot of trust to you know sign on for a film where you don't get to read the whole thing. So talk about that for a sec and how you convinced the actors to do that. 
Uh, look, at this point, I mean, 19 films in, I think we kind of get what we can grab a hold of and, and whatever that may be in any any small part or large part in this universe I'm, I'm, I'm on board for and this experience is one of the best I've ever had and something that I was most excited for. This is the culmination of 10 years of, of 19 films from, from Kevin and, and his crew, so, yeah. It's been amazing and the truth is, these, Chris and all the actors know their characters better than anybody. They've inhabited them for so long, they've grown with these characters. So, they get their pages and then they improve them. And then on the day with Joan Anthony Russo allowing a freedom to really give these spectacular performances, and this gentleman in particular coming off of Ragnarok and what people are about to see in Infinity War is, uh, is frankly astounding. It's very super impressive. You know, speaking of Ragnarok, there's a scene there where you're standing there shirtless, and I'm looking, going, "This man is shredded to bits." Do you have a cheat day? Are you, Do talk you, get fat? Are you talking about him? Yes, sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, sorry. yes, yes. Uh, I do. I do have a cheat day. Uh, today? today, this is it. This is my cheat day <laughs> <laughs> for the next 25 minutes. So you know, I'm pretty hungry. No. <laughs> All right. Well, you're going to train for that period leading up to it. You know, for a good four months, and then the you know the week or so before it, you really crunch it. And then after that, you can you know, pop it into neutral and kind of roll to the finish line. So, not as hard as it looks. Well, speaking of the finish line, we're going to send you on because there's a lot of people who want to talk to you. We have one or two more questions for you if you can stay with us for a sec. Thank you, Thank you so you. much. So one of the things that people want to know is when, since you are the Grandmaster Storyteller, when you're putting all of these, not just individual characters, but franchises together, how do you create a seamless feeling with all of it so that it, you're not like, oh, I'm now in a Guardians movie, now I'm in a Civil War movie. Like, how do you knit it together? It's the, it's the, it's the, our, all of our collaborators at Marvel Studios and Trin Tran, our executive producer on this film, Ludi Esposito, co-president and partner on all the films, Victoria Alonso, uh, the entire team keeps all of this in our heads. And we've gotten to the point now, with, it only took us 19 films, <laughs> that all of the filmmakers love the idea of this shared sandbox. And on Infinity War in particular, Chris Marcus, Steve McFeely, our directors, Joan Anthony Russo, just love this world. And in the case of, of all four of them, they've been a part of this world for many, many years and know it inside and out. And there were films that hadn't been written yet, but that needed to be addressed in Infinity War. And it would just be a very close collaboration. As we were scripting movies, we would give them the latest. They would work on a storyline. Then we'd go, oh, actually, well, it changed in that other movie, so they have to adjust something else. But really, what, what Chris and Steve do so well in their screenplays, and you saw this in Civil War, is with all of these characters, with all of these different personalities, they're able to thread through a unique and very cohesive single narrative. And that's what this movie has, due in large part to Thanos. This is the Thanos narrative that finally pays off after 19 films. Well, it is quite a path. On, on a personal note, I grew up as a sci-fi geek and a sci-fi girl, superhero fan, and I felt very much alone. And to have lived with this over the last 10 years, to have, this is my 16th premiere with you guys, to have been a part of this in a teeny tiny bit, I just have to say thank you for bringing all the stuff I love to the thank masses. You. I can't wait for everybody to see the movie. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a wonderful night tonight. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. All right, come on over here. Next, we have Denai Guerrero and Dave Batista. Hello, come on over. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How you doing? I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Congratulations. Thank you. This is insane, right? So we stood here about two and a half months ago, and your movie is still in theaters. How does that feel? I mean, it's it's pretty. Um, it's mind blowing to me. I mean, I I mean, you could you just hope that people like what, what, you know, what you get to be a part of, but um, couldn't have anticipated this. I mean, really could not have anticipated it, but it's uh, kind of beyond one's dreams, so it's pretty awesome. I've personally have seen it 10 times. Oh, wow. I, I have my favorite moments, but what was yours during the filming? Oh, I mean, there's so many. I mean, I remember Chadwick saying the other day, like, there's a difference between during filming and then when you see it, they might change around based on audiences. Like, when you're when I was here in Los Angeles versus when I was in uh, South Africa watching it or in London. Like, it's very interesting to feel a, the audience feel it with you. And it was, it was so, there's so many, it's hard to place. But, I mean, I do love a lot of Shuri moments. She's really fun and, and charming and hilarious. And I love... Leticia so much, so, yeah. And Drax, does that change for you as far as when you see the movie, your, the Guardians movies in different places with different audiences? Do you sort of pick out different moments that resonate with you? 
Oh, didn't hear one word you said. <laughs> no, that, no, I heard different audiences, and what was the rest of it? When you see the movie, just like Denai, when you see the movie with different audiences in different places, do different pieces of it resonate with you? Or are you like, that's my favorite moment today? That's my favorite moment today. No, no, no. It's always a weird thing for me. To, like when I go and watch my show, you know, films that I'm actually in, I feel nothing but uh, embarrassment and self-consciousness. <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah, so I don't really get to enjoy it until I actually sit down. I think sit down and, and watch it kind of at home. Then it's when I can really watch it just a, as a film and remove myself from it. Yeah, so if we go out and like things like this are a little overwhelming for me. And I'm always my own worst critic, so seeing myself on film is just... It's just a horrifying experience for me. That's amazing, <laughs> someone so big and strong yeah. to have that no, fear. No, I'm super. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm super critical and self-conscious about you know my performances, and so it's just a, it's a self-conscious thing. I think it's a good thing at the end of the day. It just it just shows you. I I think it shows you how passionate I am about this. But uh, as far as this, I don't think I'm in this movie much. So <laughs> I don't I don't know for you. None of us have seen it, right? Know. So we don't, we don't, we don't know if we're in it at all. You know, right. we're just here to enjoy it. Right. We have right. no idea. Right. So I just want to enjoy it. I think I'm just going to be able to sit through it and enjoy it. You know, just be a fan. Yes. Yeah. Um, of course, one of the things we were just talking about with Kevin is Thanos and how he is just, you know, this is the culmination of his story and we finally get to see it. Thanos is very personal for Drax, you know, for the Wakandans, a little bit less so. So what's that like for each of you fighting an unknown, for you fighting something very personal? I, I can't hear you at all. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, your relationship with Thanos. My relationship with Thanos. The cool thing about this is I think, you know, there, there is definitely a, a history between Drax and Thanos. But the thing is, if you look across the board with all the characters, he's tied into everyone. He's, he's connected to everyone's life. Everybody's in this film. Every Avenger uh, has got, everybody from Wakanda has got personal issue with Thanos. <laughs> so I think it's, you know, you, there is definitely a history there, but I think across the board, and I think that'll reflect even more in this film, people will pick up and, and really see how much Thanos has just uh, affected everyone, and that's why we all just want to kill him. <laughs> he's we the biggest threat. Thanos. Yeah, he's yeah. the biggest threat you could yeah. ever imagine, right? So, you know, of course, that involves bringing everyone together to make sure that uh, that threat doesn't take away everything we know and love. Well, we're excited to see you bring it with the Dora Milaje again, because that's one of my favorite parts of Black Panther. Absolutely. <laughs> well, you know, we'll see what we see. Listen, I'm excited to see everything myself, but uh, as I said, I haven't seen it yet, so uh, we're all going to be experiencing it together, which is going to be awesome. Exactly. All right, got to send you guys on your way, even though we could talk to you forever. Have a great time tonight. There's a lot of people here who want to talk to you. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I love that the actors are just as excited to see this movie as we are. Absolutely. They don't even know if they're in it, which is amazing. <laughs> we, Louis, Victoria, that's okay. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? It's good to see you. Good to see you, too. So, we were just talking about how when you have a huge film like this with so many different franchises coming together, how you keep the tone consistent. Mm. Do we? You would know, not me. <laughs> no one's seen the film yet, so we don't know how we the tone is. We can't talk about it. I mean, I guess everyone will have to wait and see. What's really exciting, it's a culmination of 18 films, 10 years. Uh, it's, it was truly a Herculean effort to get it done, and uh, we're really proud of it. When did the light switch? Like, you start with Iron Man in 2008, but when did it switch and say, you know what, there's something bigger here that we can do? Well... You tell him. Uh, when we were making Iron Man, we were quite myopic. We knew we wanted to make, we had a, a universe that was connected, but we, uh, our, our, our sole purpose was to make a great film. And then once that came out, it was really good. We said, you know, this might work. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, the rest is history. I think might work is a little bit of an understatement. <laughs> what you have done is amazing. Thank you. Thank you for your support. We're excited to be here. It took a lot of, uh, more than a decade of work and all these talented people tonight. So. It's an awesome place to be. Well, May 2nd, 2008 kicked it off with Iron Man. We're here now. Enjoy your night, guys. Thank you so much for talking live to the fans. Will you be here next year? Well, are you making a movie next year? There's more to come. There's more to come. We have more. Avengers 4. Avengers 4. That was the one question fans kept asking over and over on Twitter. What is the name of Avengers 4 Untitled? Are you going to tell us? Avengers Untitled. Untitled. Avengers oh, Untitled. Oh, that's very <laughs> creative. Wait another yes. year. <laughs> Same time next year. All right. Same time next we'll year. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Don't say we didn't try. We asked your we question. Did try. We paid attention. We did try. Avengers Untitled doesn't really have a ring to it, but I'll work with it. Yeah. Hi, Sebastian Stan. Oh, How are you? God. I'm good. I'm really good. Oh, I'm on the speaker. That's good. 
you are um, live talking to the fans right now. You are live in the Hello theater fans. right now. Hello, fans. In the theater, okay, that's yes. good. You're everywhere right now. This movie is going to be everywhere, but you haven't seen it yet, have you? I am, I have not seen it, no. Uh, like, similar to, I think, most people in this, in this film who have not seen it, I have not. But I'm excited, I'll see it tonight. What are you allowed to tell us about Bucky's state of, shall we call it healing, or state of mind? I would say uh, it's definitely a refreshing uh, new, new take on, uh, on the character, at least uh, from my point of view. Uh, it's just, you know, kind of maybe a throwback to some of the old days when, uh, when, when things were a little bit better for him. So, um, but the past never leaves you. So you do the best you can, and then you'll see. You know, sometimes it comes back to haunt you. I don't know. Is well, it refreshing to? Is it refreshing to get a chance to actually fight with Iron Man as opposed to fight him? Uh, that I can't really tell you, <laughs> because. But I'll say this: um, I, I, I don't think Iron Man necessarily's forgotten everything that happened. So Tony Stark is probably still holding on to, to some of those grudges, and rightfully so. Oh, you killed his parents. Yeah. You did kill his parents. Yeah. I mean, come on. I, I did it's kind of hard do to some terrible things, yeah. <laughs> so something know, else redemption too. Redemption is still in the works. Something else, too, there's a really interesting trio going on with you, Falcon, and Cap. You know, you sort of have, like, some new best friends. What's that dynamic like? Uh, for us as actors or just in general? Well, I mean, Anthony and Chris are, you know, probably the closest I've gotten out of everybody just because we've done so much stuff together. And um, I don't know. At this point, I feel like we can almost guess each other's words. Stanley. Stanley. Um, Stanley. You know, we can kind of finish each other's senses. So it's, it's, uh, it's really easy, I guess, you know, to work with those guys. I can't keep a straight face with Anthony. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's a whole other thing, but... No, that's what we hear. We hear he is definitely the one on set who cracks everybody up, brings some big energy, so. It's going to be great. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for it. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Thank you. I'll see you soon. All right. Okay. We'll see you soon. Thank Bye. All right, you guys, we are having such a good time. There are so many cool things here on the carpet. There is a cryo chamber. I wonder if it's going to give him flashbacks. We've got John Favreau. How are you doing? Welcome. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm good. This has got to feel amazing for you. May 2nd, 2008 to now. Come on. I'm very proud, very happy. What an event. I can't wait to see the movie. Yeah. Are you in the movie? I'm not in this movie. Okay. Spoiler alert. But I'm executive producer, and I'm in... I think I could say I'm in the next movie. I'm in four. Oh. Is that fair to say? Avengers Untitled. We got the official That's title it. of it. It's yes. called, yeah, four. Yes. Avengers yes. Untitled. Yes. That's the official name. <laughs> you know, we talk a lot about the Avengers as a family, but what's interesting about Tony is he also has this other family between you and Pepper and Tony. Yes. So tell us a little bit about that dynamic and how it plays out in this and four and whatever you're allowed to say. Well, it started off with me just being a, an extra in, in Iron Man. Because I was there already, and I got to play a character named Hogan. And over the films, that's become a, a character that's come. Hey! Uh, what are you waxing poetic about? <laughs> Get over there. No, you're more interested you go in than I am. Because what's awesome right now is we have the director. I love you. your eye makeup. Thank you. Is that Avengers theme? It matches the carpet. There you go. I got the memo. <laughs> nice to catch up with you yeah, in front so of cameras how's your and family? thousands of people. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. All right, so I'll give you guys a question so you don't have to vamp. So um, you put her in Iron Man 2. What has it been like watching her evolution throughout this Marvel Cinematic Universe? It's really cool. They, uh, online there was uh, Marvel put up something about the last 10 years, and I saw little clips from then, and we look like little babies. <laughs> I can't, you know, you don't think that you've changed or anything, and then you look at yourself and... You're like, oh, if I knew that now, then what I know now, you know? But it was a really fun ride, I have to say. And I've got to know Scarlett through it, and we've worked together on a number of projects, Jungle Book and Chef since then, and it's just my family and the, and the Marvel family are so intertwined, it's hard to separate them. So it's great that my home movies are up there on the big screen for everybody to see. Yeah. And for you, I mean, you talk about family. You've had this evolving family. Um, where is Nat in her journey of trust at this point? Does she trust in anyone? Her, in her journey of trust? Yeah, does she trust anyone anymore? Um, yes, she does. I think mostly, most importantly, she finally trusts herself. You know, she's finally been able to kind of grow into her womanhood and be able to make active choices and uh, 
you know, I think that's most important. I think that's how she survived this long, is trusting her own instincts about things. When you sign up to do Black Widow, did you envision this being part of the arc? I thought the carpet was going to be a different color, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Everything else she had. Everything yeah. else They're I just... totally foresaw, yeah. <laughs> but she was all business from the beginning. She, she locked into that role, and she created it. Of course, it existed in the comic books, but, but she brought her own spin to it. And watching that character develop over Avengers and over all these films, it's, I'm very proud and excited. And I'm so happy we made the right choice when we hired her, because she's become the face of one of the big faces of the franchise. Were there things that I'm you extremely happy song. about it too. It's really worked out. <laughs> Were there You've things done okay. That... You've done all right. <laughs> no, I mean it's crazy because I didn't I didn't know what uh, the audience would think about my portrayal of the character. She's so beloved, and I was so fortunate to have John there to. And Robert to help guide me through the process, and they they were so encouraging, and Kevin Feige was so encouraging that they could they made something that could have been very, you know, uh, that could have been terrifying for me and paralyzing, like really possible. So, I remember I remember in Iron Man two, when we were in rehearsals, I walked into a stage and she was up on a up on up in the rafters on wires, and I said, oh, she she'll work out pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> she was not messing around from there, the very beginning. Were there things about the character that you had in mind that once you began to play the role, you decided to change the character to fit her? Yeah, I mean, it's evolved. And I think that as each, as each writer and each director came in, it, what's nice about Marvel is a partnership forms. And, and although you have Kevin and all the team at, at Marvel overseeing everything, each director or set of directors comes in and brings in their own spin and their own flavor. And it becomes a collaboration with the, with the stars. And so, when they come to the series, they already have her established character. Like in Avengers, she was already established in Iron Man 2, but then the character became so much more. So it's, it's become like a, an evolution of, of shared vision. But each time there's a new partnership, the characters change. So last question then, you have worked with so many directors in so many different scenarios now. What for you as the actress has been most important to keep consistent about Widow? What is the, I'm sorry? What's been the most important thing for you to keep consistent about her? Um, I think the character is really, uh, her strength it lies in her vulnerability and I think, um, you know, that's been something that I've been able to uh, kind of chip away at and, 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 and really, you know, share with the audience and, and, and uh, you know, I, I continue to, you know, have, have to be kind of inspired by that journey of a, a character really becoming more themselves. Well, we are too. We cannot wait to see this movie tonight. Thank you so much for stopping and talking to the fans. It's been <laughs> great you hearing so you tonight. Thank you. Congratulations. And now I got thank to catch you. up with John. Yeah. So happy. That's what we want. We want you guys to have fun here tonight. So thank you. Um, amazing. Like we are saying, we have so many things here on the carpet, so many great displays. Yes. Um, Comic Cave actually is here with some incredible figurines. They have three different lines that they're introducing as part of their exclusive Avengers Infinity War line. So we're taking a look at them right now. I don't know if you can see their little finger puppets. There's also, um, we have a, a big line that you can see. There are 14 to 16 inch figurines. And these are fine art pieces. So it's very cool. Oh, look, there's a little finger puppet. Oh, that looks so amazing. What is that Thor is holding there? That is not the hammer. That is not the hammer. <laughs> not the hammer. But speaking of some of our favorite characters and smaller superheroes, we have Paul Rudd. Hi. How are you doing? Good. So nice to see you. Nice to see you. How's it going? Very good. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks. Good. So we had your co-star, Evangeline Lilly, here before. We talked a little bit about, you know, going from, oh, I'm sorry, I banged your mic. We talked right. a little bit about going from, you know, Ant-Man to this next character. So what are you allowed to tell us about what you're doing in this movie? Boy, I really have no idea. You'd think I, I would have been prepped. You I think they, they, yeah, the general rule of, the, you know, just don't yeah. spill too many beans. You can talk about who's in it, sure. um, and a general, uh, you know, the, the general tone of the thing, which is bananas, and uh, and I right. think we go we go further in this one. So here's a question then. So you've been to the quantum realm. Doctor Strange has been to the multiverse. Both of those, as you say, are kind of bananas experiences. Mm -hmm. What would what advice would you give to him at this point about kind of navigating some of those crazy experiences? Uh, well, you got to take deep breaths, uh, plenty of fluids, stuff with uh, citrus, or orange juice, 
Uh, a grapefruit juice yeah. is good. Uh, you want to you want to load up on protein, okay. and uh, and uh, try and you know deep breaths and and and, and calm your nerves because it's a it's a mind melting experience. How much of the great jokes that were heard in Ant Man and going forward were came from your genius versus the script? Oh no, they were all from my genius. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of the script, I mean, you are a script writer for, you were for Ant-Man and for Ant-Man and the Wasp. This time you kind of know going in that you're writing. So what's that been like going into that process? Well, it, you know, the, it's been such a collaboration. It's always nice getting in from the ground up and help shaping it and, and you know, writing scenes, but also working with these two guys, uh, uh, Chris McKenna and Eric Summers, who are really incredible writers, and uh, I'd never worked with them before. Uh, they really did so much, as did Stephen Broussard, uh, our producer, and Peyton Reed, the director, and Kevin Feige. You know, it's a, it's a, it is a, a, a true collaboration. Well, we cannot wait to see it this summer. We can't wait to see what you get to do in this movie. Have a wonderful time tonight, and thank you for stopping and talking to the fans. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Great to see you. You too. Um, coming up, we have someone we like to call Groot. Groot. Is he is Groot. 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 Say hello to everybody on Facebook. Hi. Hi. Okay, this what? is amazing. You like this? This, this is, is amazing. awesome. Come on, guys. It's just the group coming out of me. Ah. Uh. I just want to talk <laughs> about my jacket. Um, look at this. Whoa. Wow. So this. I don't is know this if you Versace. Look at look at is this. Who's this? Look at that. Look at that action. Oh, oh my. Okay. I don't know if you guys action. can. You. Oh, I want. I want to make sure they can see it on the cam. Their camera. So I'm talking, I'm talking normal, and next thing you know, branches are growing out of my chest. <laughs> Crazy! Oh, How are you guys doing? We are great. How are you? Come on I'm over amazing. here. Amazing. This is like, this is wonderful. This is such a great premiere. Okay, we need to know whose idea Thank was you this. Thank you guys for having me. No, no, I'm oh, so happy God. you're here. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Oh, we gotta ask, how did how did this happen? Was this your well, idea? Well, um, I gotta give this credit to Paris, uh, my stylist, because the last time we were at a at, at a premiere, I was wearing stilts in London. Uh, but this group is uh, a teenage group, and so uh, we're gonna wait for the stilts for the next one. Oh, oh my God! I love you so much. I love you so much. We are Groot. I love this. <laughs> I'm so happy. All right, I, can I just tell you, I just have to tell the world how much I love Zoe yes. on such a deep level. <laughs> and, uh, you know, part of the reason why I feel so great about being in this movie is because of... And I love you. I love you so much. He's like one of my biggest role models in this town as a New Yorker as like a full-blown artist, and as someone that after becoming a father truly believes in the significance of, of you know, being a part and adding support to films like like um, like Avengers and, and Guardians of the Galaxy, where you know your 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 biggest your biggest audience is the younger generation sure. and the fandom community sure. that are absolutely devoted and and are all about cultivating aspiration. Sure. We are just so excited to be here. Okay, so along those lines, I have a question for both of you that I wanted to ask. So. My friend has a daughter who's 12, and she and her girlfriends are totally into comics. And they do that very nerdy thing where they sit around and like, okay, who would beat who? Who would beat who? And the most awesome question, the most awesome discussion she overheard was, who would be the best mom in the, which superhero would make the best mom? So who's the answer? Who is the best mom? I say her. I think, I, well, I, Gamora I know is, the angel, so I'm, is I'm definitely, Uncle yeah. Her, so. <laughs> She's I'm definitely biased. an avid to every Guardian's Costello, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I think that Groot would be a great dad, too, and a great big brother, man. Yeah, he's so nurturing. Yes. Let's never forget. Yes, he was, he, he, he sacrificed. He saved you all. Sacrifice. Speaking of family, Thanos is your adoptive father. What's the family reunion like in the movie? In, in my family? In this, in this movie, when what you family? finally see oh, Thanos. Oh, you? It, you know, I think that I don't want to cheat everybody out of an yeah. amazing story. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. 
that um, we will see. But I can honestly speak about like just the community and the family that we became as actors a part that are a part of the Marvel Universe. Um, it was nurturing, super supportive, very inclusive, very celebratory, and we always felt so lucky and blessed so to be doing what we're doing in, in, in the Marvel family. It's a good family to be a part of. Yes. So along those lines, I mean, the Guardians have had two movie experiences, two movie making experiences together to bond, to create this very cool, unique family that we hadn't seen in the MC sure. before. So what, how did that energy change when you brought in the rest of the Avengers, when you brought in a larger part of the MCU? I don't think we ever lost our sense of family. Ever, uh, ever. I think, I think it just expanded, and I think, I, I think what Zoe's saying is right. The whole Marvel Universe was so welcoming. Um, we, we just came in, we have just felt grateful to be there. Absolutely. Can you give us a little sneak peek of what Team Groot sounds like? <laughs> a sneak peek of what? Of what Team, Groot? Groot, what Team Groot sounds like. Well, if, if, well, Team Groot should be playing video games right this minute. <laughs> Which he did, he did in volume two. He was dancing, he was never focused, no, like, no, he was no. off doing his own thing. Yes, yes, <laughs> but yes. he was always man protecting the Guardians. Well, <laughs> well, you guys are true family. Thank you for stopping and talking oh, to the Marvel fans. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, guys. you guys. Thank you and congratulations. Have a great time tonight. It is all about family. That is so true. Yes, absolutely. I was trying to figure out if her and Thanos had barbecue chicken together and potato salad at the family reunion. I guess we're going to have to wait and see. I guess so. All right, Lorraine, what's happening with you? How's it going over there? I am here with the man of the evening, Stan the, Le Stan the Man Lee. It's so wonderful to see you. Thank you so much Thank for you. coming out tonight. I what would you like to say to fans coming to see your work here tonight? Now, we are on now. I want to thank them for having spent all these years coming to see my cameos and, of course, watching the movie with it. And now I think they're going to find the funniest cameo of all. I can't wait till they see it. Well, I can't wait for them to see it either. Uh, what is it like for you seeing all of these stars celebrating your work tonight? Uh, you, I mean, your work is so momentous. Uh, what has it meant to you? I'm going to show you why I'm such a great interview subject. <laughs> it's nice. Oh, it sure is nice, though. It's so lovely to see you here. You're so amazing with the fans. What brings you out night after night to show after show? You're he always giving something. insisting I come. <laughs> I am... Um, Whoop. I don't know. It's force of habit. I never miss these things, and I figured I might as well come tonight also. Well, we are so glad that you did. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. Enjoy the premiere tonight. You're a great interviewer. Thank you. You're a great Thank creator. You. Thank you. Let's check in down the carpet. How's it going, Tamara? How is it going, Helzy? Oh. I'm freaking out right now. <laughs> You just talked to Stan Lee. Stan Lee, and we have Paul Mantis. Hi. Hi, nice Hello, to see you Hello, Mantis. Guys. <laughs> yes, it's me. I know. I look different. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, but beautiful. What, sorry? I said a little, but a little bit different, but beautiful. So it's great to oh, see thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So um, you are now an official part of the Guardians, and then you're thrown into this crazy larger world of the Avengers. What's that been like for you? I mean, it's uh, it's incredible. It's incredible to be here, and uh, I had so so much fun working with everyone on set. And I'm, you know, it's just insane, you know. <laughs> yeah. Now you and Elizabeth Olsen, though, have worked together in other films. So was that fun to be on set together in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Now, Who's you and Elizabeth Olsen. Oh yes, 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 for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think she's uh, she came here just earlier, right? Yeah. I can't. Yeah. We're gonna party tonight. Yeah. <laughs> which Avenger were you most excited to meet once you got on set? What, tonight? Which which Avenger, when you, when you finally got to set, you were most excited to I see? I mean, I love them all, but, you know, I'm, like, really friends with uh, Karen Gillan, so I can't wait to, uh, to see her tonight. I miss her. Well, we would love to keep talking to you, but we know you want to see Karen and all the rest of your buddies, so we have to send you on your way. Thank you for talking to the Marvel fans. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. All right, Lorraine, who you have down there with you? This party just keeps on going. <laughs> All right, I am here with the queen of Wakanda, Miss Angela. 
Hi there. Um, I have to ask you a really hard-hitting question, which is do people say hi, auntie, a lot to you now? <laughs> they do from time to time, and I love it. I love it, too. I mean, I know that everyone was so excited for Marvel Studios' Black Panther, but what has it meant to you just seeing this outpouring of love? I mean, it has just become part of the zeitgeist in such a crazy way. Isn't that phenomenal? It has been incredible, more than we could have ever, ever imagined. We knew it was special when we were making it. How special, we don't know. You know, breaking a 35-year ban in Saudi Arabia, crossing over a billion dollars in under five weeks, in four weeks, just amazing. And just on the lips and minds of everyone from six to 600. <laughs> I love it. Well, you've become the real royal family, I think, of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Thank you so much for speaking with us tonight. Enjoy the premiere. I know there's so many people who want to speak with you. Thank you. How's it going, guys? Uh, we're standing here with none other than Gwyneth Paltrow, Pepper Potts herself. Welcome. You were just saying, this is crazy like the Oscars. I can't even hear you. It's so bananas, <laughs> I don't know what you said. We were saying how crazy this whole thing is. Yes, it's amazing. It's, uh, I've never quite been to a premiere like this before. You were in the very first Marvel film, Iron Man. You played this incredibly powerful, strong woman. What is it like to see basically your legacy throughout the universe? It's amazing. I feel uh, very honored to be a part of it. And um, it's wonderful that Marvel is really kind of fostering all these incredible female characters. And so I'm, I'm thrilled to be here tonight, even though I just have a little part in this one. <laughs> well, I don't think anything Pepper does is little because you have such a huge influence on Tony. We were talking about he has his family of Avengers, but then he has this family with you and Happy. Can you talk about that dynamic and that part of his family? Well, I think it, it's sort of what Tony always returns to. I think Happy and Pepper are really what ground him, and he can sort of go off and save the world. But then he needs to come home to people who love him. <laughs> I do have to ask, have there been any prolonged effects from the extremists, or is Pepper completely cured from that? She's OK. She, she detoxed. She did a goop detox, oh. and she's fine. No more extremists. I hear that works. <laughs> yeah, we hear there's good stuff there. <laughs> What are you most excited uh, to see pairing-wise um, as far as, you know, different Avengers and different worlds of the MCU coming together tonight? Well, to be honest, I've never seen an Avengers movie. I know. So, uh, but my son is a huge fan, so I'm here with my son, so I'm most excited to watch him watch the movie. That is amazing. I mean, because <laughs> all the cast members are family, but they, the film's also very family-friendly as well. Yes. yes. One of the things we were talking about is this idea that it has been 10 years. So many of you, you know, started off as, as young folk in the movie and then grew up and had families and all of that. So to see them through your children's eyes is a different experience. It's true. My son was only a baby when we did the first Iron Man. So it's amazing to be here with him tonight. Well, you guys have a wonderful time. Thank Enjoy. You. And thank you for stopping and talking to the thank fans. Thank you for having me. Hey, thank, thank you. you very much. Bye, guys. Enjoy. Bye. I love that we are getting to see so many different people from so many different films. I can't believe they're all in one movie. I know, it's amazing. And, and listening to her talk about her son, I remember uh -huh. taking my son to see the first Iron Man. Yeah. He's now in college. <laughs> <laughs> That's how, you know, time flies, right? That 10 years. That stop you from taking him to see this one, you know. Well, pretty soon you should be graduating and taking me to the movies <laughs> to pay me back for some of the money I spent. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Lorraine, who are you hanging out with right now? I am here with the Bob Iger. Oh my goodness, it must be such an exciting night for you. What is it like seeing something like 10 years of the Marvel Cinematic Universe come to fruition tonight? Well, on one hand, um, you know, it feels great. It feels like, you know, we've reached a pinnacle of some sort, but knowing what's in store after this, I know we're not even close to being near the top. Listen to you tout those secrets. <laughs> Unfair. No I, well, I do know a lot of secrets. So you'd have to, uh, you'd probably have to tie me up and and uh, and coerce me, and you still wouldn't get it out of me. We don't want any spoilers. Thanos demands our silence. We know better. We don't want the Mad Titan coming for us. Uh, what has been the most exciting part of tonight for you? Well, I think the most exciting part tonight is to see um, a plan really come together, to see all of these actors, all of these characters, in one film is amazing, but knowing that they're all part of a puzzle that basically is formed over this decade 
until it gets larger and larger and larger and more colorful and you know and then to see it all as one it's phenomenal well we thank you for all of your support and just getting to see this marvel cinematic universe tonight thank you so much for being here and talking with us you're welcome thank you and let's see what's happening down the carpet thank you so one thing that is very clear they train everybody very well on the art of secret keeping. Yes, they do. I'm a trained journalist, and I can't get anything out of these people. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, you guys, your questions have been great. We've been trying to ask as many of them as we can. Please keep joining in on the conversation at Avengers on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and hashtag Infinity War. Yeah, absolutely. Were there any questions that we didn't get a chance to ask the actors? There are so many questions we don't ah. get a chance to ask. Of course, the questions we want answers to, they're not answering. So... <laughs> But that's okay. That's part of the fun. I think what's really unique about this is the fact that none of the actors have seen the movie. Right. Many of them haven't read the script. They're getting only the pieces in which they're actually in, as yeah. opposed to the entire script. I mean, that's really fascinating. And your question about the trust, that's when you know there's a real family, because they're putting a lot on the line to just do a bit part in a larger film. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the things that I think is unique, too, is that there are so many different ways to express your fandom, to show your fandom. Like we said, we've got cosplayers here. We've got all kinds of really cool things on the carpet. Like we were talking before about the comic cave figurines that are here. These are the fine art figures that you can see. And, oh, we've got a little Black Widow. Black Widow. We've got some uh, Gamora. Star-Lord. Mm -hmm. Rocket. Groot. Mm-hmm. So, so cool. Yeah, super cool. I think I might have to wander down there later and take something home with me. Well, if I get a chance, I want to definitely sit on T'Challa's throne. If just for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd look good on T'Challa's throne. I think, that, I think it suits you. I just don't want the Black Panther to come after me to take it back. <laughs> <laughs> don't, I, I think you're safe. I think you're going to be okay. <laughs> All right, uh, we are also talking uh, to as many fans here as we can today. It's only fair, they were waiting out since last night. Langston was talking to them earlier. Let's take a look. Okay, it is time for the Citizen Infinity War Challenge. I'm gonna be asking four awesome Marvel fans to name as many characters from Marvel Studios Avengers Infinity War as they can in 30 seconds. Starting off with Taryn, who is awesome, dressed up as Nebula. How are you doing today? Good. Good, are you ready for this? Yes. You think she's ready? All right, I'm gonna be using my awesome citizen watch to time you, so you ready? Okay, I'm gonna give you 30 seconds, I'm gonna give you a countdown, ready? Okay, go, three, two, one, go. Iron Man, Vision, Thor, Black Panther, uh, Mantis, Gamora, Nebula, uh, Star-Lord. <laughs> uh, I know his name, uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't know. No, yes, you do. You keep going. Think. You have plenty of time. You have time. Yeah, Doctor Strange. Yep. Hulk, um, um, uh, Black Four, Widow. Three, two, one. Yeah. Time. Awesome. Give a round of applause. It was 11 names. Awesome. And because you were so awesome, because you look so awesome, you are going to get this amazing Infinity War poster. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. OK, so that's one. 11 names. Tough to beat. I'm here with, what's your name? Amada. Amada, how, you look great, great hell horn, horn, you know, horn helmet. Reppin' Loki, very, very good. Okay, I'm gonna give you 30 seconds. Name as many as you can, all right? Sism watches out, and go. Black Widow, Iron Man, Thanos, Scarlet Witch, Captain America, um, Loki, of course, Doctor Strange, Spider-Man, Star-Lord, Nebula, Gamora, uh, Groot, Rocket, um, Mantis, did I already say Mantis? I don't think I did. Um, War Machine, and uh, Winter Soldier, did I already say him? Or is he White Wolf now? I don't know. Um, Five, uh, four, Okoye, uh, Black three, Panther, two, and that's one. it. Oh, time, very, very good. Those was a lot of names, it was, over, it was over like 15 names. So very, very good. You get this awesome poster, congratulations, yeah. So 15 is the number to beat. I'm gonna move down Cap. Cap with his Wakandan shield. Awesome, you ready? You gonna give beat 15? Awesome, all right, what's your name? Andy. Andy, get ready. I'm gonna look at my citizen watch. 30 seconds, ready to go? One, two, three. Captain America, Iron Man, Black Widow, Thor, Doctor Strange, Hulk, Hawkeye, Black Widow, Do Doctor Strange, no, I already said that. Star-Lord, Gamora, Drax, Rocket Raccoon, Thanos, Bucky, let's see, Zemo, Thanos, Wong, War Machine, Falcon, Spider-Man, Okoye, Nakia, Black Panther, 
Let's see. Um, Killmonger. Let's see. Kaecilius. Uh, Loki. Three. Odin. Two, the ancient one. Oh, very close, very close. Some of them were not in Avengers Infinity War, or Marvel Series Avengers Infinity War, sadly. But you named a bunch of characters, so that's awesome. So you're going to get this sweet, awesome poster. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy. All right. One last one. And last but not least, look at this sweet, sweet shield I am here with. Jamie. Jamie. Awesome shield. Hold it up. Hold it up. No, nothing's right on the back, right? No. Good, good. Okay, good. All right. 30 more seconds. Name as many characters from Marvel Series Avengers Infinity War as you can. Ready? Three, two, one. Go! Bucky Barnes, Thanos, Star-Lord, Gamora, Nebula, Croot, Rocket, uh, Black Widow, um, maybe Hawkeye? Uh, we don't know. Um, Captain America, Iron Man, War Machine, um, I'm sure Stan Lee will make a cameo, um, Vision, Scarlet Witch, um, Doctor Strange, uh, Okoye, Black Panther, um, uh, oh my gosh. Four, uh, Mantis. Three, two, and... one. Oh, but very good. You did 20 names. That's a record. 20. Yay! Congratulations. And of course, you get an amazing Marvel Studios Infinity War poster. That is our Citizen Infinity War Challenge. Thank you to everyone that participated, and thank you to all the awesome fans out here. Okay, that is tough stuff. I don't know how I would amazing. do with that challenge. I kind of want to, do you want to do it? Uh, how many characters can you name in like 20 seconds? Ready, go. Now? We'll do it together. Okay, okay we'll do it together. Ready Wait. and go. Thor. Captain America. Hulk. Uh, uh, Iron Gamora. Man. So, uh, Saldana, I was gonna say Saldana. <laughs> <laughs> Gamora, Saldana. <laughs> Nebula. Uh, Doctor Strange. Drax. Uh, do we say Groot already? I think we said Groot. I said, we Groot. said twice. Uh, Wong. Wong, Wong yep, yep, from Doctor Wong, Strange. Yep, 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 okay, um, we've got Ant-Man. Uh, Iron Man. The Wasp. Uh, Pepper. Pots. Uh, <laughs> Mantis. I think we're out of time. I think we blew it. We just embarrassed ourselves. Oh I my think. God, can I just say that that, um, that little nebula was the most adorable thing. Like she yes. went full out with her costume. I know, it was so amazing. It's, that's why I love Marvel Universe so much because mm -hmm. as I said before, family friendly, you don't feel bad about having your kids look at it. There's a great message, mm -hmm. but there's also really adult at the same time, really adult themes that happens in these movies. Exactly, and I think Lorraine right now is hanging out with one of the people who is responsible for bringing a lot of those themes to our fans. So Lorraine, who you got down there? I am here with Neil Kirby. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me up here. I, I have to say, your father's work ha has been so important to the Marvel Universe. What is it like getting to see something that you probably saw as a kid just become a cultural phenomenon? Um, well, this has been just absolutely incredible. And just to see his work up on the screen, um, he drew every comic book basically as uh, a movie on paper. Uh, he would just be absolutely thrilled, flabbergasted, and uh, it's, it's been just, just wonderful, just great. I love that so much. We actually have a little area of the Marvel creative space in New York that we call the dungeon after his art space. <laughs> after a studio, yeah, I spend many, many time, much time down there. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations to you and your family. What a wonderful celebration of your father. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's check in down the carpet. Thank you so much. So one of the things that we got to see a little bit earlier was Langston in the incredible exhibits that are going on. Yes. There's an Infinity War exhibit, and there's also a Marvel Cinematic Universe 10-year anniversary exhibit. Yes, it goes all the way back to 2008, goes back mm -hmm. to Captain America, the first Avenger. We have Red Skull's limousine is back there. Oh, my gosh. There's their costumes back there as well. You know, the costumers um, constantly uh, find new and exciting ways to bring to all of these characters to light. And, of course, you know, they work very closely with the visual effects teams and the production designers because these are truly a collaboration of technology as well as costume design. Judiana Makovsky is the costume designer for Avengers Infinity War and I'm really excited to see how she brings together all of the different um, franchises to create kind of one world that feels cohesive in Infinity War. Yeah, I'm looking at these costumes now and all I can think is I have to cut all my carbs for the rest of my life to fit in some of these. <laughs> yeah, you definitely have to be hitting the gym if you're going to fit inside of some of these. Well, I these. guess if you're a superhero, you're supposed to be in good shape, right? Absolutely. Well, you've got to be. You know, you got to punch. You got to, although some people, you know, have accoutrements. You get armor that helps you, a that special suit. That's definitely true. Definitely mm -hmm. true. 
was so cool. Oh yeah, it's fun to watch that. <laughs> Lorraine, have you been watching these costumes? If you could, if you could pick one to inhabit, what uh, what would you like to try on? Oh gosh, that's such a hard question. I mean, what costume wouldn't want you want to try on? I mean. I just think the Dora Milaje looks so amazing. It's like, mm -hmm. you want to try that? But of course, Black Widow, I mean, I, all of them, all of them. Mm -hmm. And who, okay, but real talk, if you could try on an Iron Man armor with a real heads up display, with the full working gear and the AI and Jarvis talking to you, I feel like that would be the coolest thing. But of course, I want to live in a fictional world <laughs> where there's an actual heads up display. Well, I, I would definitely want to try Thor. Yeah. Yeah, I would go, I would look, I would take my hair down a little bit, <laughs> shake it like Chris Hemsworth. Oh, see, yeah, you, you see that? Yeah, 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 I would go full Thor. Nice, nice. Yeah. Well, I think I might have to go the Guardians route, because of course, I always wanted to be an astronaut growing up. So the idea of getting to explore the cosmic realm a little bit, I mean, that said, both Gamora and Nebula spend a lot of time in the makeup chair, so that would definitely be a challenge. Um, but I think I, I would actually like to try on Gamora's, Gamora's stuff. Yeah, but you have to have the stepfather to go with it. Do you want Thanos as your adoptive father? I mean, I have to say the Marvel Cinematic Universe is not filled with great parental figures <laughs> in general. Thanos, yes, I think he might be the worst of them, but there's a lot of people who kind of get a real deal when it comes to parenting. <laughs> I would, I would definitely agree with that, for sure. Yeah. Though poor Tony Stark, he didn't get a chance, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Nice so. long Winter Soldier. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there's May. May is fantastic. good family. She is very good family, yes. Mm -hmm. do, so. you, do you think she has a crush on Mr. Stark? I don't know. I mean, it's not every day a billionaire shows up in your living room. Well, I guess it depends on your living room. <laughs> Well, we have had 10 years of history to build on, to appreciate these costumes, to have all these relationships that we, all these stories we just want to insert ourselves in the middle of. Let's take a look at the 10 year legacy of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's a very interesting time now, and boy, you don't know what's gonna happen. I know that I'm proud of it. I know that we've done everything we can. I really don't know how people are gonna react to this thing. This could be anything from a flop to a, a moderate single or something that it's beyond what people's expectations are. You never know, you never know. Good luck keeping up. We were in our own slipstream of feeling like we were doing something a little bit special and different, but the full circle of seeing that audiences were reacting to it the way we had hoped they would was powerful. I had two dreams when we started this a little over 10 years ago at Marvel Studios. One was that Iron Man worked. The other one was that we could build something that was as expansive and as experiential as what people who've read comics over the years could get. I had a lot of faith in Kevin Feige and people at Marvel. Do you want to give them everything you got? Because they're going to give everything they got. This was a whole new journey. By the first Avengers, I thought, oh, wow, I think we're onto something here. Just seeing the characters together, there's something viscerally awesome about it. And I think that's yeah. why the minute Sam Jackson showed up at the end of Iron Man 1, whether people had read comics or not, yeah. who is that? What does that mean? Why is he here? And then Tony Stark appearing at the end of The Incredible Hulk. What if I told you we were putting a team together? Who's we? Those seem like just the tiniest of things compared to where we are now, but those were the foundations that led us here. The cutting edge concept behind the Marvel Universe is this massive organism of shifting parts and new ideas. How do we do this? As a team. Seraphine is responsible for all of these amazing actors and actresses that we brought into this. I think after the first Avengers, people realized that this was not just an ordinary comic book movie, that there was really a lot of thought and a lot of care and a lot of passion that's going into each and every one of these films. And there's also some joy. I think when the actors are having fun and creating these characters, the audiences feel that. Let's do a dance off! It's fulfilling that those Characters have just spoken to so many people all over the world. We are Groot. I love the fact that we've been all given the opportunity to do something different, put our sort of ideas forward and attack a character again, and hopefully advance on that and bring something unique to it each time. 
It's wonderful to be able to play this iconic character that means so much to people, and I really have to thank the audiences for that because they embraced my portrayal of her from the beginning. Final fitting, what do you think? Questions, comments, concerns? And allowed me to walk in Natasha's shoes and kick ass in them too. I can tell you that each and every one of us is so grateful. Our lives are monumentally changed by our involvement in this world. To have taken such a, an instrumental role in what Marvel has done in the past 10 years is just so incredibly meaningful to us. It's a cool experiment to be a part of. It's epic and classical. These characters are mythological characters in a lot of ways. So I love all of you, and I look forward to seeing many of you as we trudge this road of happy destiny. It's nice to look at, at how the legacy is living on in these other movies and other filmmakers. I don't think this has ever happened before in cinematic history of all these different franchises colliding and all these storylines that have started such a long time ago have all woven together. Who the hell are you guys? As the films have progressed with Civil War and now Infinity War, we're just gonna continue to surprise people. There was an idea to bring together a group of remarkable people to see if we could become something more. It is amazing when you see that all put together. 10 years of filmmaking, of relationships, of characters that we get to invest in. Absolutely. I mean, the story arcs of all the characters, but just the fact that they're family away from the sets, that's what mm -hmm. really touches me most. Yeah, absolutely. And seeing them congregate here yes. today, it's, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. And we have our own family. Lorraine, what's going on with you? Well, I'm just down here at the other end of the carpet. It is packed in the Infinity War exhibit. Everyone is, of course, trying to get lots and lots of photos. And that's what I love about a night like tonight. You know, it's not just the actors from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's also a lot of people from Marvel who bring the stuff to life every single day. The people working behind the scenes, their friends, their family that are there to support them tonight at the premiere. So we're really just enjoying seeing all of the celebrities go by. Everyone is enjoying meeting each other. It's so fun to watch everyone just giving hugs and saying hello to the people they haven't scene and also you know their chance to get a look at some of the celebrities in this film it's just a huge celebration i think of the marvel cinematic universe and of marvel comics you know i think it's always so fun to see the different creators on the carpet uh, getting to see stan lee and uh, neil kirby who of course is the son of jack kirby uh, such a legendary creator and to just see really what brings the whole universe together uh, what's going down uh, at the front of the carpet there tomorrow in lz well, it's getting a little quieter down here now yes, because the stars are making their way to the theater where they're going to see this movie unspooled for the first time, which is just like still blows my mind. Yes, it's quieter in terms of the stars, but look, the fans have not moved one inch. They're so excited to be here, and who can blame them? <laughs> 10 years, 18 films for this moment, I would probably say as well. Yeah, I think <laughs> I would too. But the other place I would like to be is actually inside the exhibit, taking a look at some of the artifacts. So Langston, what are you looking at right now? Uh, well, right now, I am still in the Marvel Cinematic Universe 10th Anniversary Exhibit. Uh, I'm right now just checking out Schmidt's Coop from Marvel Studios' Captain America, the first Avenger. Uh, Schmidt is also known as the Red Skull. He was the first holder of the Tesseract, the first time we ever saw the Tesseract uh, be used by a villain. And his car is so cool. It is... It is such an, like, a cool, iconic, you can imagine it's a big statement of power and coolness. It's, it's based on three different car designs. It has double wheels in the back. It has, like, the cool floodlights in front. You're probably looking at it right now. It's, it's just one of those things you stand in front of, and it is such... Like a taken, you're taken aback by all the cool details and stuff on it. So uh, I'm going to be seeing a whole bunch more, but now I want to send back, uh, back to you at the carpet. Enjoy. All right, I'm here with Sean Gunn. Hi. Hi. Uh, you're, you're Mr. President over here just saying hi to everybody. Is it so fun to just run into everyone on the carpet? Yes. It's yeah. one of the things I was most excited about for this premiere. I mean, obviously, I'm excited to see the movie, but also, like, all of these people from the Marvel Universe, they're all here. It's kind of blowing my mind, so... 
you've done a lot of films now. You've been in a lot of Marvel Cinematic films. Uh, what is it like, every new film, how does it progress for you? Um, well, I, I, I definitely keep having to pinch myself. Um, I, I, uh, I love that you keep your like sense of sort of earnestness about it. I mean, you're not you're not getting glammed about it. Oh no! I mean, you never get used to this, and particularly this this carpet is like Huge. this has got to be one of the biggest like ever. Right? It is the biggest Marvel Cinematic Universe premiere ever. What about any premiere ever? I'll it's Google it. There, it's got to be up there. It has to be way up there. I mean, look at this. Um, so, what are you excited to see in the film tonight? I know no spoilers, obviously, but uh, what are you looking forward to in general? Um, I'm hoping that Tony Stark and uh, Peter Quill have some kind of a have some kind of a showdown. I'd like to. I'd like to a dance off. Them. Maybe a dance off. Yeah, I'd like to see them go toe to toe. Do you think they'll do the robot? I don't know. We'll have I to mean, see. I feel like Tony Stark has a distinct advantage. Yeah, what well, we cuz he's already wearing sort of a robot costume, you yeah. mean? Yeah. You know, yeah, that's you know, fair. It's just experience. That's fair. I always take uh, Star-Lord in a dance off though. Oh he, yeah. Well, he has saved the galaxy once before with a dance off. That's true, but would you uh, dance off with Chris Pratt? I personally would dance off with anybody in the Marvel universe. <laughs> Well, you heard it here first. Go find him at the after party. I <laughs> appreciate that. Thank you so much Thanks for so much. speaking with us. You too. Enjoy the premiere. All right, you guys heard it there first. There's going to be a dance-off tonight at that premiere party. I can't wait to see it, although you guys aren't going to be able to see it because it's a very exclusive ticket. How's it going down there at the front of the carpet tomorrow? <laughs> wow, well, I'm now, jealous now. <laughs> I know, right? I'm feeling some pressure to like, start dancing and have some moves. Um, but I will say one of my favorite things here tonight has been watching all of the actors interact with each other. Yes. You really get that sense of the family that has developed between them over the last 10 years. Yes, which is incredible because there are so many characters and so mm -hmm. many people. And yeah. you have two worlds coming together with the Guardians and the Avengers and to mm -hmm. see them seamlessly just blend together like a happy family, as you said. It is a big happy family. Yes. Let's hear what they have to say about that. How is this dude still alive? He is not a dude. You're a dude. This, this is a man. A handsome, muscular man. A muscular man. <laughs> here we are on the set of Avengers. I've been lucky enough, along with other Guardians of the Galaxy, to join up with the Avengers mm. and be here and get an opportunity to save the world. Does it make you an Avenger now as well? <laughs> I don't know. I hope. Maybe like a third string Avenger, yeah. I was one of the founding members. So. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Oh, so he's huge. You know, out of all of the people that I've had the good fortune to work with, these two particular guys and the triumvirate that we formed together, it's very special friendship and decade plus of time together. Go team, yeah! It's been this witnessing of like people's lives growing and changing. It's been a really cool experience. Working with Lizzie has been really, really awesome. And I think there is something very powerful about being able to play women who do heroic things. And those women are so awesome. So we've had a really good time. Hanging out with everyone on the set is one of the best parts of this job, actually, because it does have this kind of large extended family feel. I had a bit of a bucket list. I wanted to work with Prax. So I thought he'd be good fun. Proven completely wrong on that front. He was arduous and boring and not particularly funny. Boom! Well, at first blanche, it's hard to know what to make a Cumberbatch. And then the more time I spent with him on and off set, I just kind of infatuated with this guy. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, the journey that Robert Downey Jr. has made, he's the godfather of all this. It has literally been the adventure of a lifetime. I get a little misty thinking about it. So, you know, I lucked out. can hear what's going on here. Uh, a little a little actor with a little role uh, by the name of Robert Downey Jr. has so just freaking arrived. Me. Oh my god, did you hear that crowd respond to him? They've Wait, been out here for hours. Can you hear them Wait. chanting? Uh, Robert, 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 Robert. 
Robert, Robert. I mean, it's amazing. Yes. Well, he started this all, right? I mean, 2008, yeah. mm -hmm. it was Iron Man. Exactly. And because of his performance, because of the performance that he did in the box office, we have all of this. So all the cheers, all the chanting, absolutely deserved. And he deserves a lot of credit because, you know, now, like, the Marvel Cinematic Universe approaches you and says, hey, you, you want to come play? You're like, yes. Yes. But, you know, back then, this was all new, you know? It was taking a chance. It was trying to do something different. But um, we are very, very excited that he is here. Lorraine, how are things at your stage? Well, things are excellent. I'm here with Peyton Reed. We've just been doing some math equations, getting ready for Marvel Studios, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Absolutely. We've been doing math equations. That's all that we're doing. OK, this is a huge night. I saw you palling around with Paul Rudd. Is it hard to share your actors? Is it like sharing your toys? It is. I get really, really jealous. Yeah, when, like, when, when Paul goes off and does something or Evangeline goes off and I don't like that one bit. Like, do, you, are, are you like, do you like the Russos better than me? Do you fight? Oh yeah, no, and I, I'll call. I make prank phone calls to the Russos. I, I can't. Uh, I can't stand it. I don't like it. No, I love it. That's so. It's I so share. great. I, I can share. Good, good. I'm glad. Now I know we're talking about Marvel Studios Avengers: Infinity War. It's the big ticket. Uh, I know you're a big comic book fan. What is it like for you getting to see Thanos up on the screen now in full glory? Well, it's amazing, uh, especially uh, in its full glory in a movie this big. I mean, who would have thought? 10 years ago that you'd see a movie with Thanos in it. Uh, that excites me as a nerd. Yeah, it excites me too. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. Enjoy the film tonight. All right, thank you. Thank you. What's going on down there, you guys? Well, one of the things that is so much fun for us to watch are the directors talking about how they all work together. Yes. You know? It, it, it's, I mean, I don't know what that would be like <laughs> to be a director that comes in, what, five, six films in, having mm -hmm. to carry this huge mantle, but they've mm -hmm. done it flawlessly, which is one of the amazing things about the 18, now 19 films over these 10, 11 years. Yeah, they've really built an incredible support system for one another. It's funny, we talk about the interconnected nature of the Marvel cast, how they've all become a family, but there's really this great brain trust of directors. You know, they talk about, um, the Russos have talked about in interviews kind of the whole timeline of Infinity War, mm -hmm. and the idea that, um, well, they were in, Oh, where they were in post, Ant-Man and the Wasp was in pre-production. You know, the fact that um, Doctor Strange and Guardians and Thor Ragnarok, they had to be in really, really close touch with all the directors. Right. While also still being secretive so that not too much information gets out. Do you think they text yeah. each other? They talk to each other while playing Fortnite? Like, how do they communicate with one another? I feel like there's a whole secret system we don't <laughs> even know about. <laughs> I mean, if they figured out how to go to the quantum realm, then maybe it's happening there. Very good. Very Maybe good. there's some mystical Maybe. magic going on with some Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange has found some way for them to communicate without the rest of us hearing what's going on. Exactly. Although I do feel like between Tony and Shuri, they've probably got encryption down pretty well. Yeah, and don't forget Banner. People yeah. forget Banner's also a genius. I do not forget Banner, ever. <laughs> Oh, I see the fire in your eyes with that one. Oh. <laughs> I'm a big fan of the Hulk. I grew up watching the Hulk on TV. I've, I've always been a big fan of the Hulk, so. So if I make you angry, are you going to turn green? We're not going to discuss that. You don't want to go there. I will not mm -hmm. go there. I'm just saying, you know, you don't. There is a character called She-Hulk. There is a character called She-Hulk. There is. Is she in this movie too? <laughs> <laughs> We have not been given that information, but just putting a plug out there, maybe. Anyway, um, yes, so it has been amazing watching all these directors talk to one another and know that that's going on, too. And then, of course, you've got the writers, um, you know, Marcus and McFeely, who have really shepherded this universe through. I mean, if anyone knows how to write for Captain America, they do. Yes. And now we're going to get to see them take all of that expertise and apply it to so many other characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You know, I've talked to plenty of actors during one of these big you know, openings who hadn't had an opportunity to see the film yet, but to mm -hmm. know that not only have you not seen the film this time, but yeah. you don't know actually how the story is going to end and how it's going to continue in, I guess, Avengers 4 slash Untitled is yeah, the official. Yeah, just <laughs> Untitled. That's all we get. <laughs> so they're just as, as excited about this as we are. All right. Well, since we can't look forward, since we don't really know anything, let's right. take a look back at some of the amazing history from the 10 years. Langston, what do you have going on? Oh, listen, there is so much history here. It's so amazing. One of my favorites, one of the best of, if you, could, if you, if you might say that, is the little model of Baby Groot. It's, it's, it, you just want to hold it. I want to hold it in my hands and tell him everything's going to be okay because he has a little smile on his face. There is also uh, one of the pods from Marvel Studios' Guardians of the Galaxy that uh, Peter Quill used before he saved Gamora. It's just like every single piece here is just better than the last. Really, my favorite, 
the Sokovia Accords because I, as a card-carrying member of Team Iron Man, I wanted to read it. I could see a little bit inside, there's little contents, and I tried to see, but just the detail and just the attention that has been paid in this exhibit to the fans is great. I've been watching people file through all day, just taking pictures, big gasps and big, like, oh my God moments of like seeing their favorite characters' costumes. So um, there's so much here. I can't, the list is too long and varied. So uh, Tamara, back to you. What do you, what's the best thing you've seen all day? Oh my gosh, the best thing I've seen all day. You know, I have to say, I really enjoyed watching um, John Favreau and Scarlett talk. I thought that was a really special moment. I mean, you talk about a 10 year history, a 10 year relationship to see, you know, him sort of like glow about her. I mean, he was, you know, in some ways a mentor and now they're here together today. So that, that was a really special moment for me. How about you? I love standing next to Winston. I mean, he was such a hilarious factor to Black Panther, and to see just how big he actually is, yeah. that is a huge man. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I was like, I'm 6'2", and I'm still looking up. This doesn't make any sense. No, not so much. I will also say, I always love talking to Tom Holland. Like, I love getting his perspective, because he's like, I'm 21, and I'm playing with the Avengers. Like, that's amazing to see. That is absolutely amazing. And it was good to see, because it was such a genuine reaction to being part mm -hmm. of this huge universe. Like, you could see that he yeah. grew up with Spider-Man, just as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I will also say watching um, Dave Bautista and Zoe Saldana talk to each other, you know, again, we talk a lot about this being a Marvel family and how close everybody gets, but just the way they communicate with each other, you really see that on-screen chemistry is very evident in real life. And the chemistry with the fans, like the fans mm -hmm. love them and all the actors and actresses acknowledge them in a very loving, genuine way. It was a beautiful experience to see. Yeah, I mean, every actor who has come out of this publicity, to, or who has come out, has come and talk to the fans. Yes. So. I'm going to need one of those Groot jackets that Vin Diesel was wearing, though. I think that'll be really hot in the club. <laughs> we'll talk to a stylist about it. We'll see what we can do. I don't know if I can afford those prices. Yeah. Uh. Lorraine, <laughs> what's going on with you? Well, I might have the king with me, Chadwick Boseman. I heard people losing their minds. Is it hard for you to be out now just because you are the king? You're the royal family now. You mean out and about in, like, in normal life? In normal life. At times, yeah, at times. But uh, I'll find a way to just, just live a regular life. I love it. Yeah. Well, you deserve it. The film, still in theaters. I mean, that's the first time. It's a really historic moment. What is it like for you to have two films in theaters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? What has it meant to you? I don't know yet. I don't know. <laughs> like, it's going to be crazy uh, once it gets out, because uh, this is a great film as well. Uh, there are a lot of surprises in this movie. Uh, so I just I can't wait for people to see it. And um, I'm excited like a fan myself to see this movie right now, so. Well, I, I know that I definitely am too. Now, we've gotten a little hint that uh, T'Challa wants to open up maybe a little bit of Wakanda. What can you tell us about going into Infinity War? No spoilers, Thanos demands our- I, I can't tell you anything. Um, How was it then working with some of the other actors from the other films getting to collide universes? That's the most amazing part of this movie, um, I think, because Marvel has been so um, specific about each one of those, each one of the films that they do. You know, like there's a, a different conceit, a different style to each of the films. So just watching how uh, the Russo brothers were detailed and kept um, what those things are from each film, and you see characters go in and out of it, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun to well, see. Well, I can't wait to see it. Everyone's saying that you have to go in down the carpet. So thank you so yeah, much for talking with us. Yeah, uh, wave for the royal family. Hey. Thank you guys for watching. Wakanda forever. <laughs> thank you so much, Chadwick. Oh, how amazing. It's so wonderful just to get to see uh, the Wakandan royal family here all supporting each other tonight, all here on the red carpet. I think it's been such a phenomenal, I mean, it's just a phenomenal mo uh, movie and film. And it's just so exciting to see them all together. And I can't believe it's still in theaters. It's and not only still in theaters, it's still in the top 10. I know, that's what's <laughs> pretty amazing. amazing. I mean, I think it's grossed at this point $1.3 billion worldwide. I mean, that's amazing. I'm not good at math, but that sounds like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, then don't talk to Peyton Reed, because they were trying to figure out Ant-Man on the other end of the carpet. <laughs> Speaking of this carpet, let's take a look at the epic experience that this carpet has been tonight.
Rico Atiti, and Benedict Wong. There have been so many amazing moments here and on this carpet jacket today. And for Groot. Mm -hmm. Still so amazing to see. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have had such a good time here tonight. This has been your first Marvel carpet. How's it been for yes, you? This has been absolutely amazing. It was hard for me to control my emotions and actually ask questions and not just scream like a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you restrained yourself. Yes. Well, we want to thank you guys for watching, for joining in on the conversation. And of course, we want to encourage you to go see Marvel Studios, The Avengers, Infinity we are opening on April 27th. We cannot wait. You can get your tickets now. Absolutely. Marvel. It's your universe. Your universe.